Jason Sean Alexander. This is Comic Con. Hey guys, uh, day two of us trying to, you know, make a convention in my office. So today uh, I'm going to just launch into some drawing, but right after me, I'm getting to talk with Philadelphia co-creator and writer, Rodney Barnes, um, which you guys should stick around for. But right now I'm just going to start prepping a drawing. It's uh, a lovely morning. Uh, Miss Nicole manning the board in the other room. Cheers. Here we go. Starting off the workday with a little um, Irish whiskey. So today, um, I think we're starting off with Lobster Johnson. Uh, I got a little impatient, started a little head shake, but <laughs> that's essentially about it. Uh, all right. Anybody with questions and all that kind of jazz, go ahead and hit me up. For the most part, I'm just going to start working. Hey, Dave Crosland. So Dave uh, is a fantastic artist, and he and I will be having a sketch brunch with uh, you guys tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow at noon. I have my own. I have that little theme song stuck in my head. Okay, let's just get this. All right, let's get some shapes.
Uh, so essentially, quite honestly, I, I'm sure I work probably a little different than most than than a lot of than potentially a lot of professionals because I I just I'll start sketching around until something finally clicks, and then I'm like, all right, all right, start finishing it. But um, I'm just kind of jabbering at the moment. This is the start of the day. And he told so he's like cute and silly right now. But he won't. Uh, it would be, um, today is a Jameson Caskmates kind of day, though I'm quite the fan of Bushmills. So if she's going to end there, we're going to... type of behavior do you prefer to use? Um, uh, I use uh, not quite exclusively, but uh, Strathmore's 400 series watercolor paper. It allows you to really beat the hell out of it. Uh, Jake, you're, are you, I kind of have a follow-up question. Have you replaced the ink with something else or are you talking about it clogging up while using the actual ink that comes with it? You guys hear weird sounds coming out of me? It's literally just sound effects of lines. If you're if you're new to joining us today, that tends to happen. It's such a I really love the uh, actor they chose for Lobster Johnson in the movie. Uh, yes, replaced. Uh, have you, um, so far, I, I, I had tons of problems until I, uh, until I found uh, the Cold Noir Rapidograph Ink. The Cold Noir Rapidograph Ink, I believe, is the, I, for me, it's been the perfect, uh, it's been the perfect uh, uh, waterproof ink replacement for what they are, for, for the pilot pen. It, uh, it doesn't, I haven't had it clogged, but if you're, um, but if you have it clogged and anybody who's using these pens, there's these little guys, Matt. Yeah, man. Cole Noir, K-O-H dash L dash N-O-O-R. You can find it on Amazon. Uh, Rapidograph Inc. Uh, flows well. It's waterproof. It comes in these great little bottles that actually allow you to really kind of get in there and refill uh, your your cartridge. Bloop, bloop. 
this little guy. And it'll look kind of like this, but cleaner. It's the best ink I've found to, uh, to replace the uh, non-waterproof stuff. Hey everybody, if you hear me talk to uh, somebody that's not here visually named Nicole, she's in the other room manning the board, uh, making sure all this can happen. Uh, Nick, I'm going to just keep drawing and drawing and uh, whatever you want to put up a comment or something, just tell me <laughs> and I'll look up and, and answer a thing. Still have the original art for Philadelphia number three. Uh, those kinds of questions break my heart. Um, no, I though I uh, in, in my experimentation, I've kind of found a method that involves uh, working both traditionally and digitally. Um, Philadelphia issue three would was one of my first books I'd ever done uh, fully digital. So there are no originals to Philadelphia issue three. There are originals to Philadelphia issues one and two, but they're also not available. Speaking of original art, though, guys, if you uh, if you type in the promo code uh, comic on uh, on my big cartel page, that is where I sell all of my original art from Spawn, Abe Sapien, everything. Um, we uh, we put up new content fairly often, but right now we're having a sale that if you type in that code, you get twenty five percent off your entire purchase of original art. So give it a stop, yeah, stop by, give it a look, but having a, you know, incredible but, uh, original art sale during Comic-Con. This guy is so fun. Thank you, Mike. How's everybody else doing out there on a Friday afternoon? Thank you guys for... Hey! Thanks for coming. 
thanks everybody for your comment. I, you know, this is still weekday stuff. So, uh, oh man, all the times with the new techniques. Anytime I see somebody, you know, somebody's art I haven't seen before, or somebody's trying a new thing, or um, you know, and I actually found that you know, digital uh, really kind of helped in that. Like I fought tooth and nail against digital. Like I like just the worst thing. <laughs> and, uh, and then um, once I, once I kind of grabbed onto it out of necessity, honestly, uh, for, you know, deadline and speed, then I just started seeing it not as a replacement. I mean, I didn't stop drawing in ink once I started doing paintings for galleries. Uh, and so once I started seeing it just as a brand new medium to draw comics that I've never used before, I got really excited. And that kind of opened up this whole thing where I'd, like I'd kind of been a purist curmudgeon for a, a good number of years. And so, and I didn't realize honestly how much that had kind of, kind of closed me off on stuff. So now, uh, especially now, I just, I find, I feel that I'm way more open and accepting. I've always tried new styles and techniques. I've always wanted to bring unique things to the comics, um, non-comic book things to comics, but, uh, I just, I, it, it's one of those, you know, you kind of, whether you realize it or not, we can all kind of get stuck in our, you know, in our own ways of doing things and take something to kind of jar us out of that to realize that nope you, you learn until you die because who the fuck wants to draw the same way the entire time that you draw it should always be experimentation one of my favorite artists for that it has to be dave mckeon for as uh as established as that guy is uh every project he seems to push and try something, something from him that I haven't seen before. And it happens every project. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm enamored. I, I, I want, uh, I want to, I want to be more, you know, I want to be like that. I want to be uh, experimenting and trying things and, and always pushing, and pushing yourself. I mean, but trying to push anything else you just got to work on your your own stuff yeah, go pencils regular uh for comic books yes um yeah i tend to just want you, you you'll you'll go into these tight little details and and you just want some kind of extra little you know something it, this is like a, a point this is like a point nine or point oh nine something like that that's a little thicker than most but uh i typically i don't even like penciling <laughs> this much but um i want to make sure that you guys get some good stuff that you pay for okay now we've got you now we gotta start refining to see so i'm using uh photo reference it's so funny the angle of this thing there is there it's actually more <laughs> probably on point um, the, uh, I'm using a uh, photo reference, uh, for Lobster Johnson here. And so basically I was just establishing everything I kind of needed from the photo reference of this person. And now I have a, a reference picture of lobster johnson up so i can get the I, I knew what he looked like and i knew what kind of reference to uh, look for but um now gets the fun part of kind of dressing this military person up as a as lobster johnson so if we're going to do that we're going to knock this in <laughs> Oh, both sides. Oh. The design on this guy. So good.
top three vampire movies. Uh, I don't know if this just ages me or if you know if the age I or, or was because you know I, I don't know how objective I can be. But uh, Lost Boys is always going to be <laughs> on the top of my list. Um, Near Dark, that was that was a, a really cool one, I think. Uh, and uh, Fright Night. <laughs> <laughs> you have Evil Ed, man. I mean, uh, you know, welcome to Fright Night for real. <laughs> Jerry Dandridge comes down. Um, so those are my, those are some of my favorite for vampires. Uh, my favorite um my favorite uh my favorite creature that when it comes to you know at that age seeing vampires and, and Frankenstein and mummies and all that kind of stuff and you're kind of getting introduced to that stuff and seeing it my favorite I was always just naturally drawn to was werewolves uh, I, I always uh, I always just I always wanted to draw werewolves so um, that's that's um vampires were you know cool like i said like those movies i i thought they were just very 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 fun versions of vampires um but then when you get to things like werewolf movies then you're looking at stuff like the howling and yeah and honestly i like the design of the werewolf i think it kind of it might pull a little bit from the howling but there was a movie called waxwork way back in the day and I thought that they had a truly fantastic werewolf in that movie. And I don't know if anybody else remembers this, but honestly, as a kid, I was a there was a TV show, there was a series called I believe it was called Werewolf. Um, I could be very wrong on that one, but uh, it's one of those where it's been so long ago where I'm like, did I dream that there was a series? Uh, but I, I really enjoy watching Werewolf the TV series. That claw. Have you ever considered the same drawing style as you do for covers and fine art? Same. Uh, in the same style uh what do you mean by that <laughs> uh i don't necessarily feel like i change styles uh but are you talking about doing a a, a fully painted book um like a fully yeah a rendered more artful kind of edition of something and if that's you know if, if something like that was your question, I haven't. I, I have done kind of painted books before. I did a book called Damnation for Dark Horse, and that was uh, that was painted color. But the um, I do have a graphic novel that I've been scripting, and it has always been the intention that that be a uh, a painted mixed media book. Pouches. God damn it. Yeah, I just love tons and tons of pouches. I always wanted to do a uh, a short story and it would just be this kind of empty room and it would be the it would be the character cable from way back in the day. Or the you know, the original cable. And he would just be literally going through each of his pouches trying to find his bubble gum and uh 
And given how he initially looked, you could basically fill an entire issue that way. But I just like the idea of one of these characters genuinely having to look through their pouches for something. Because there's so many. Oh, I love those pictures. This is just me being thrilled at Mike's amazing character design. This thing we don't know, we're just gonna keep going. Uh oh, Jason's taking too much time on this so far. And he's talking about himself in the third person, that's even worse. <laughs> Huh? What is the weight of your leg? The weight of HB. Uh. <laughs> this might be just one of my favorite questions I get to ask. Um, Pardon me. I blame the whiskey. Um, from the big two. Marvel, it would, it would hurt me a little bit. If uh, I died before I ever professionally drew something with Ghost Rider in it, <laughs> I think <laughs> honestly it's like the '90s. If they if, if Marvel would just let me would would call up and say, "Hey, look, we want you to draw the Hulk versus Ghost Rider," uh, and that's all they do for four issues is kind of fight in a desert, like you know, that would just be because you know no background. But um, uh, Hulk and Ghost, Hulk and Ghost Rider, Hulk. I know it, it may it may be a little bit of a surprise. I just but those shapes, man. He's just he's nothing but shapes. He's 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 these big, huge. I would love to draw it. I think he would be so fun to draw. And Ghost Rider, I, I did a print for uh, Upper Deck a long time ago, or a couple years ago, uh, of Ghost Rider. And I think since then, I mean, I, I was always intimidated. I thought Mark Texiera just pretty much closed the book on Ghost Rider. But now I, I have to admit, I, I would love to kind of give it a go. DC, same thing as, as far as like, if, if I could just get magically get the call that said they would let me write and draw a, uh, uh, a Lobo Batman story. I have to at least draw Lobo in a story before I go. It's just got to happen. Uh, I think those are just the most, they're so fun. It's muscles and veins and, and no rules. Like what possible rule exists in Lobo's universe? 
guy drives a motorcycle in outer space and has pet space dolphins. He really does have pet space dolphins. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not just meandering here. <laughs> While we're going here, guys, um, for those who are also inclined to look outside of comics for, for fun art and stuff like that. Uh, my assistant and, and woman who's making all of this stuff possible, Nicole, is a fantastic artist and goes under a name, Bouleep, B-O-O-L-E-E-P. Do you have a web, can you put up your website? This fantastic work and it's gonna be something different that you haven't seen, especially following stuff like mine. And I think you'll enjoy it. Thank you, Miss Nicole. All right, so now that I've got the Lobster Johnson elements doo -doo -doo -doo, uh, kind of in there, Jason, look. Now that I've got the uh, Lobster Johnson stuff, uh, the details of the character knocked back, I'm going back to the uh, the photo reference uh, so I can basically just get those little, those specifics, those little details, right? those shadows, those wrinkles, those little When, one day, I think, I, I'm with you, I think that would be an absolute blast to do a pro story. I probably had a few in my head over the years that I would love to do. And I love, uh, I love James. We, we talk uh, every time we see each other at conventions, we catch up and um, he's known me ever since I was uh, a little ankle biter. Um, you know, bugging him at every show to look at my portfolio and check out my stuff. Which he never really did that often. <laughs> it's good to find, you know, know some know, know these guys like later on, but you know, because you just get tired sometimes at the end of these shows and like Yeah. You know. But uh James has been really good guy and good friend. All right, you see, so we have less distortion here with the, with the camera, There's some, some pencils.
enter the scene with independent comics but can't find an author for the story part of comics. Any suggestions? Twitter. <laughs> um, I, I know a lot. I have a, a good number of uh, comic writer friends and uh, a lot of these guys hop on Twitter and, you know, honestly, you can, you can put your stuff out there and say you're looking for a writer. I, I found Louise NCT, my colorist for MD Zone, Frostbite, Philadelphia. I found him by uh, putting an open call on Facebook. Like as silly as some of this stuff sounds, sometimes the most direct way is the best. Uh, and if you get on Twitter and say, here are some art samples, I have a story idea, or I'm just looking for a writer, I'm down to draw your story, you're going to get responses. What's that? Who has a portfolio review? The question? Or is going to be on the review site. Ah. Well, good luck, Or. I do. Uh, sometimes the I, I I love them. As a matter of fact, my favorite is is red. I love using red for my underdrawings. Um, I love drawing with quill, uh, quill and ink, quite a bit. The I haven't found a brand of the non-repro pencils that don't seem to like mess with the ink in these guys. Um, so I then. Uh, I'll either knock in some just basic, I'm, I'm really only kind of penciling this. This is the heaviest I ever pencil. Um, because there's a certain level of like, you know, you're on camera kind of a thing, but mostly I try to pencil as minimal as possible. So I can just kind of, so I can just kind of ink, man. Uh, inking is, inking is bliss. You see my hands doing weird stuff, probably just like that. It's just me kind of deciding or figuring it out my light source situation. So much I love. So you're going, all right, I think. Extras as well. Oh, oh my gosh, I, I, I agree. Um, you know, Louise, if you if you wind up watching any of these, buddy, uh, I'm all about you. He knows I'm all about him. I, he's, he's he's the guy. You know, he, I, I I agree. I I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't keep bringing him on <laughs> if I didn't think he absolutely complimented what he did. And thank you for that. I think I think he's 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 really great. So much like uh, yesterday, I'm probably going to just start putting um, one demo on the list because I'm, 
I'm definitely a little slower than I'd like to be this year. So you might just get lobster, John. Here's the here's the fun part, though. Uh, not only are we doing some of these as live art demos, but uh, every all all twenty. <laughs> 20, 20 something, 24 commissions uh, are being recorded. And so if you ordered one or you wanted to see the finish of something uh, at some point on the YouTube channel, we will be playing the videos to all of the commissions. Anybody has any questions about inking or whatnot? Let's have them. So you can see these smudges that the uh, the non-waterproof ink will do. And if you're going to use that, then you got to start figuring out how to make those smudges work for you. Which I hope I do. Or you can, you know, just put a piece of paper down and draw carefully, but. Drawing carefully, that doesn't make sense. on Twitter to find them. Uh, start hashtagging a writers wanted stuff like that. Like you're if you're a, a if you're an artist looking for a writer, I know I know more writers uh, you know either wishing they could draw or wishing they had artists more than I I know artists looking for writers. Uh, that that said what i what i mean is that you can just start tweeting uh maybe tagging a couple of, of uh i don't know your hashtags you don't want to start tagging people that you don't know yet you know that kind of a thing but um it's i don't i think just on twitter itself i don't think you're going to have a problem you just literally go ahead and start putting out those tweets i'm a comic book artist here's a couple of pages of my stuff I'm looking for a writer. I want to make comics. <laughs> and I am fairly sure you'll do all right.
there was an artist yesterday who had a lovely aliens piece. And I, I just think of that now because um, there was a certain level of depth with this tail that was coming out. Uh, and I'm kind of doing what I suggested to him, which was even though there's a lot of cool little things back here that you can kind of noodle out and make details, it's going to bring that blade out a lot better if I knock things behind it out. Oops, very sorry guys. Sequential. Um, if you want to draw comic books, show people comic book art. Uh, I love looking at all kinds of art, but it's always weird if I see not like someone shows me a bunch of single images or splash pages or full page things and then asks me what I think of their or how to break into comics. And I'm like, well, first off, you got to show me you can draw comics. <laughs> it's very, it's a very different beast than drawing uh, splash pages and single images. Uh, I, I know some phenomenal illustrators that sure as hell would never touch the interiors of a comic because it's just a whole different level of labor and, and discipline. Uh, so comic art. <laughs> um, and then in that, you know, you want to, you know, uh, if you get more specific, you know, I don't, this might be me being a little bit old, but I, I would say that, you know, you kind of want to show a little bit of everything. Like, just find a scene. You know, you show a page of uh, pedestrian stuff. You show a page of uh, action. Um, you show them that, you know, you can handle all the dynamics of a comic and story and, uh, and a story. I would, you know, show editors or whoever that you're showing your work to, I would have a solid three to four pages uh, that show those examples and go from there. Or if you're tired of waiting, self-publish. Or, and I have uh, my good friend and uh, amazing writer and artist, Sherard Jackson. I'm going to have him on the show uh, this Sunday. And he does a web comic called uh, Darby through Webtoons. And it's just one of those where when he first started doing it, you know, he and I came up self-publishing together. And I looked at that, I'm like, wait, what? Like the, the resources that artists and uh, that comic book people, artists and writers, you know, have now with things like Webtoons, like it's, it's free self-publishing and the audience potential is immense. Uh, and so honestly, if you've got your own story ideas as well, you know, you can always attract, you know, bigger paying work by, you know, just start doing your own thing, self-publish or, or start a web comic. And then when it's time to show somebody your work, you're like, here, here's a, here's not only the body of work, but here's proof that I can deliver a lot of work, you know, in, a, in an amount of time. Uh, but that's, that, that comes out is that I also love the, uh, I love drawing, I love writing. I love the full storytelling. Uh, I know a good number of artists that have no real desire for that and uh and love you know just drawing just drawing other people's uh stories 
I love drawing other people's stories too, but I genuinely love writing my own as well. Uh, but I just say that as in that if it's, you know, no matter what, if it's not interesting to, uh, to you to, to try to write and do your own thing and get found that way, then um, yeah, you show a good amount of uh, differentiation in your, in your sample pages and go at it that way. So I see by the time that we're only oh, on the subject of oh, so volunteers being their own challenge. Do you find it difficult in switching between your work? Um, I don't. I typically I don't because I in the past I have jumped to one or the other at a time when I needed one or the other. Um, there would be a time when I would be drawing comics for a bit and. I just have this over whatever desire to uh, paint. I'm like, I, I've got to get back to painting. I, I, I miss painting. And so, and when I switch over, it, my, my work and my life kind of all work better when there's a certain level of balance and everything kind of has a little bit of time to shine. Um, and so, you know, it's always important for me to keep painting, doing fine art stuff while I'm drawing comics because there's certain muscles that I just love in the storytelling and the narrative and the and the line art and, and making comics. And there's, I love to try to combine the two. Um, I've never really had a problem jumping back and forth. As a, as a matter of fact, I feel like um, both of my both of those worlds for me, my fine art existence and my illustrative one, I think they inform each other really well. or at least enjoyable to me. Uh, so again, we might, you know, we'll, you, because we all, we have a time schedule and, and interviews and stuff, we'll probably cut this a little short, um, but the, but soon the uh, entire video and, and finished scans of these pieces will all be posted.
exactly I want to take a lot of these patches. I know, you know, most of these, because of light source, will end up being fall into shadow on this side. But since I don't know where I want to quite take them yet, and I want to knock out a few more things for you guys, I'm just kind of outlining around a little bit. Uh, do you hear your best bark? <laughs> uh oh, I feel like a. I feel bad just for not quite catching the reference. Um, I would if I had an inclination of what it, <laughs> of what that sounded like. You asked that question like I care for my tools. <laughs> my, uh, my pens, I store them in a backpack. <laughs> or a, a green, uh, most of my supplies uh, for drawing, mixed media, sketch, comics, stuff like that, um, they all kind of end up in a, uh, um, a canvas uh, roll of uh, supplies. I think it holds something like 50 something, <laughs> whatever pens. And I just mostly kind of keep them there and travel around with them. So in case I do work uh, or want to sketch out, outside of the studio or home, then I can. It looks like we're getting close to the two minute mark. Uh, let me see. Are we going to 1.30 or 1? One? One oh, 1.30. <laughs> Rodney, one hour. You guys, I hope you stick around for that. He's he's awesome. <laughs> he's he's a good friend, great writer. Uh, and right now, Philadelphia is just we're having the best time. So just wait, till you guys. See, uh, just wait, till you guys. See this new arc. Oh. I put my pants on.
next year, man. Uh, if, if man is correct for insert name here. Um, and thank you. I, um, I love Karen and I love the world that I started an empty zone. And next year we have a planned way for a comeback that will kind of, uh, that will jumpstart the ongoing series. That'll just, you know, I'd like to do that for a while. I'd like to make empty zone for a while. Uh, and so that will hopefully begin uh, next year. This year is all about making some horror with Rodney. Oh, out. What do we do on the rest end? You know what? Just refilling ink. What was the reason? Uh, yeah, time. Uh, timing just became a factor when it came to, at that time, starting Philadelphia. I was drawing both Spawn and Philadelphia at the same time. And, um, and, and inevitably, I started getting introduced to digital and really dug it after a certain point but um yeah mostly just uh time uh you can i can work anywhere i i can go out and about with my family and if there's a moment uh i can knock out a panel you know um because i do everything on my tablet uh through procreate so it really allows me to be mobile and work and uh for for those who use the pilot pens like I'm doing right now. Uh, I just replaced the ink cartridge. I just refilled the ink cartridge with my waterproof ink and see it just flows just the same. Uh, yeah, that Cole Noir stuff. It, uh, it's a good ink there. So keep those in there.
Uh, piece behind me. Actually, I guess it's a uh, something like Spawn issue two eighty something that it's the cover for. Um, I would like to do prints. I, I had to do an edited version, obviously. You know, for for the cover of a comic book, but uh, uh, I would like to do a a print that's just fully that piece. Thank you for the kind words, though. I, I'm glad you like. It. When I don't get to do uh, many gallery shows, if I'm doing a ton of comics, it's always great that there are covers, you know, that kind of still lets me, uh, you know, get my, get my paint on as it were. And many of you guys out there watching this uh, would actually be at a convention right now, uh, San Diego, I guess, if uh, it wasn't for everything. Would you guys be attending? I would. For San Diego, I, I fully had plans to, to go this year. Uh, when talking to Jim Mopp yesterday, it was just more of a, you know, this might... I would, I would love for other artists to catch on or, or to start doing stuff like this, like online conventions. You know, we all kind of have to adapt and try new things to, you know, this is the closest to a convention I've felt in a long time, uh, talking to you guys, doing commissions and, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm wondering if you guys are missing the whole, uh, the actual real convention. Let's get into 
issue specifically at the top of this here. How many characters you're looking forward to drawing during the commission that you maybe didn't get? Uh, no, I, uh, you know, what's funny is that when it comes to commissions, I, I tend to like um, stuff I, I normally don't draw. Uh, Lobster Johnson here is fun. I've, I've never drawn Lobster Johnson. Uh, but, uh, no, I um, like one of my one of my more fun commissions was a, a Thanos piece a, a while back, and I just liked it because you know I had never drawn Thanos and it kind of I, I I call it like I tend to like drawing the kinds of characters I I feel like I have no business drawing, uh, and so I I do I kind of tend to like ones that people wouldn't normally put me in, so then I get to play with it you know I get to play with stuff like. Uh, a Superman here, you know, Superman here and there, and that kind of a thing. So, I, I, as far as this show, I, I haven't really gotten. There's, a, there's a good number of commissions of characters I've, I've never heard of. So I'm kind of excited to play around with those, but. Um, you know, like I said earlier. Uh, you know, if somebody were to commission the Hulk at some point, it it uh it wouldn't break my heart. Like when it comes to those uh, endless characters, it's it's why I like despair. I just like these big shapes. <laughs> I unfortunately I have no plans to travel anywhere in the near future. Um, that has nothing to do with me signing a book of yours, though. Um, 
you can get with me through email or something. And if you want to do the whole mail part, I have no problem signing books and sending them to you. But uh, between things like pandemics and uh, you know, me having a six year and a six month old, I don't travel much right now. Oh, looks like we're about down to the 10 minute mark, guys. You give me a little chance to do a little bit of tech street business.
You find ways to make even the the ones that you kind of get all the time interesting. Um, I don't really want to say it right now because of a couple of the commissions for this show kind of fall fall into that kind. Of, um, with that said, I try, especially with getting to do these at home as opposed to being so rushed in the hotel during a convention. Um, I I, fi I try to find ways all the time to. Uh, to make even the ones I kind of get all the time interesting. <laughs> you think I would? Uh, nope. I um, send them off as is. If I do charcoal, I will I will put some fixative on there. But typically, I mostly work in uh, uh, inks and paints and all that stuff. So, but but yeah, when I do, you know, throw in dabs of uh, fine charcoal here and there, those are the ones I absolutely will protect and spray. But I'm horrible about that kind of a thing. Like even in my painting studio, uh, you know, most of my canvases have some kind of footprints on them and stuff like that. I just, I'm not, I'm kind of heavy handed in that way. I take care of a lot of stuff. So what are we at? We're at 126. So we're about to bolt in about four minutes. Um, you guys will see this finished uh, piece soon enough. But I want to thank you know go ahead and start thanking you guys for for coming out and uh, watching me draw. Um, that said, I hope you guys stick around. In uh, you know about half an hour, I'm going to be talking with Rodney Barnes. Uh, one of the writers of Boondocks. I know he, I just like making that reference because I just love that show. But um, co-creator and writer of Philadelphia, amongst a billion other projects, and that's what we're going to talk about. It's going to be fun. You guys will love Rod. He's a he's a cake. Um, that's about it. Thank you guys for for coming out. And I'm just going to kind of um, keep going until um, the lovely Nicole. I know we still got a couple more minutes, so we're gonna... not just in you know light source that is that would, you know it's kind of expected like once you do spatter and stuff like that or, or gray tones and then you start going in with white it's all about light tones or uh, it's all about light source and blah blah i i genuinely uh other than that i i really love kind of going in and re and correcting lines i i like i like sharpness i love edges i uh i i tend to kind of get a little bored if a drawing or a painting Kind of feels too soft and uh and i like i like edges and sometimes when you've gone in with black whether you've used a brush or a pen sometimes it's just you know kind of there and i i like going back in with the white and kind of cutting it out I like cutting out these shapes around it so uh or you know every shape like i just like uh, a certain level of uh not just crispness but it kind of feels like more confidence in the drawing. You didn't just kind of bubble something out. Like you're like, this is here. It's supposed to be here. It's, you know, and it, it, I feel like it makes the, uh, the drawings themselves a little stronger. And like I said, I'm kind of heavy handed. So I kind of, I, I go in now with my, with black ink, 
sometimes knowing that I'm putting in final lines and, and really embracing and enjoying making certain like wrinkles, lines, textures. Uh, and a lot of time I know that I'm putting in some black because I know what it's going to look like when I come back in and cut it out with white. Um, so I don't know if that just comes from being a painter or, or you know, drawing comics for the last 22 years, but um, it really does. Like you, you always try to plan two steps ahead so I can be enjoying all of this, but I know I'm gonna like cut out certain parts and in the paint and make it kind of look interesting by the time this is all said and done. So, all right, guys. Guys and gals, I hope there's multiples out there. I hope. Um, again, thanks, thanks everybody for, for, for tuning in and, and spending your Friday afternoon with me. All right. Uh, thanks, guys. We're uh, we're going to take a quick break. In about half an hour, I'm going to be back with Rodney Barnes.
Hey guys, uh, thanks for uh, coming back. And uh, what you just saw was the original trailer uh, last year that we uh, that image did for Philadelphia. And right now, who I have with me is Rodney Barnes, co-creator and writer of Philadelphia. Hello, Jason. How are I'm you, Mr. Barnes? <laughs> Your hair looks darker. I don't um, know what it is. I haven't showered. Okay. Well, so, who knew? Who knew being an artist could become that dirty? I, 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 I had no idea. I don't know what you do other than draw. But okay, hey, hey you do you. You do you. Bye. Bye. Morning, man. How are you? Or morning, afternoon. Uh, afternoon. I'm uh, I'm okay. I just finished uh, writing something I promised to you a couple of days ago, so you should have it shortly. Nice. It's about time. No. See? <laughs> this is already going south already. <laughs> uh, among uh, doing Philadelphia and stuff like that, how is it how is it working with this? Because you have uh we both are family men. We have kids uh and careers that are quite demanding. Uh how is it? Even working, you know, do you work predominantly from home? I guess I now do. I mean well, I, now, certainly. Um, it, the thing is, uh, in a weird way, certainly with COVID, um, it helps uh, get ahead a little bit because I don't have to get in the traffic and drive to a studio and go and do a thing. Um, so, you know, it, it, it. I can sort of make my own hours. You know, I typically work, I do the TV show, uh, mostly from 10 to about four or five. And I try to get up earlier to hit Philadelphia about seven to nine. And then after that, um, until it's done. So, you know, I'll figure it out. Do you, do you, you have multiple projects. So do. do you, do you plan specific days or do you try to noodle each one of them each day? Um, once I start a thing, it's really hard to move to the next thing, like to multitask. The, the, the cool thing is TV and film are different. So I could do a TV project at one time and a book. I could do a TV project and a film project, but I can't do them all. Like I can't do two books at a time. Yeah. It's weird because there's a, especially with Philadelphia, there's a rhythm to it. And you don't want to break that rhythm because if I were to go do something else that has a different rhythm, it's hard to jump back in. So yes. um, I try to, you know, uh, I can multitask, but I can't multitask in the same workspace, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, there was a it was a fun or I thought it was an interesting story that Terry Gilliam told when he uh, they had finished most of 12 Monkeys. Uh, and they'd gotten Bruce Willis. He was so pre thrilled because they'd gotten Bruce Willis to be quiet, you know, to be like this solemn kind of character. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he went off to go shoot another, I believe, another Die Hard movie. And they needed a retake uh, for one of the scenes. And he came back. And no matter what, like Gillian was like, we can't. He's still John McClane right now. <laughs> like, yeah. he, was, like yeah. he couldn't like they had to wait till, you know, until there was a moment to actually come back. And it's a lot like music. Uh, there's a rhythm. And it's hard to break that rhythm and come back and pick it up exactly where you left off. So if, um, if I say I'm going to do a week of Philadelphia, um, I can't jump to anything else. Even if, even if, uh, like duty calls and I have to do something else, it's really, really hard. I'll just 
do that thing first and then come back to Philadelphia because just the rhythm, you know. Yeah, you have to keep in that world. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. Other than Philadelphia, what else do you have boiling? Man, uh, well, and I don't know how much we could talk about the other things, about the other thing that has to do with the thing that you just mentioned. Uh, I don't know. I'll leave that up to you. You know, for anybody watching this, Jason is the husband of our marriage when it comes to comics. So he tells the world, he controls the art to people that inbox me and say, I want to do a cover. I say, go to Jason. Anything to do with art, anything to do with cow, it just all I do is write the script. I write the script, I send it to Jason. Jason does everything else. I'm like, I'm the comic wife, you know, I try to be a good one. And I, I know I get a little mouthy sometimes, especially me. And sometimes I can, I know, I sometimes I'm a little adversarial. I can't help it, you know, I have a lot going on. You're, but, the, you're the comics wife, and I'm the, I'm the film wife. Like yeah, well, like- yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, well, yes, there is a different, yes, we, we do, you know, we have a bi marriage where we kind of flip roles, we role play, we role play within the relationship in order to make it work. But any good relationship is it can be like ambidextrous in that way. Uh, <laughs> so you can start that part if you want to talk about that part, and then I can jump in and say, Oh, that's what we're talking about right now. And we go from there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not. I'm not telling anybody really about any details about this. You know, the extra surprise that we have in this arc. Okay. Of, of Philadelphia. Right. I'm just letting everybody know that in the bag and, and with Philadelphia, there's going to be a surprise this arc, not just one issue. Um, but uh, uh, we, um, Rodney and I, are also going to be working on a sci-fi project together, uh, comics uh, uh, as well. Um, that I'm insanely excited for the the script that I have, the scripts that I've read so far are incredible. Um, I want to I don't want to start giving away too much about it, but um, you know, g- going from like you came onto the comic scene doing Falcon and then Lando, mm-hmm. and then and then there's Quincredible, mm-hmm. and so there was like these kind of smattering of projects like which are great like uh, anybody that was like stumbled upon rodney barnes on falcon and stuff like that like wait what the hell is this and then all of a sudden philadelphia like that's Mm -hmm. a weighted heavy thing Mm -hmm. um and it's just it's a and from when we first started as soon as i heard the word vampires i was i was already starting to be a little bit like oh okay well and you had a drink in your hand too and you have this thing where you don't have a very good um, game face. I hope you don't play cards or anything. And I could tell that you really didn't he- want to hear what I had to say. But I knew I was paying for dinner, and you were in a booth. So you couldn't really get out of the booth quickly. So I had to talk fast. And, uh, so go ahead. You tell the other part of the story. But, yeah, I could tell. You know, No, he didn't want to do it, America. He didn't want to do it. YouTube was the whole world. He didn't want to do it. And I, many times I've pitched many things. We were at the Blue Dog Cafe one night. He was damn near drunk with a big burger because he's he, he eats a lot of meat. And he was he had that look on his face like he'll cock his head to the side like, boy, I hope he stops talking. <laughs> and I'll keep talking. And and I, I pitched – Philadelphia wasn't the first thing. A lot of ideas died on no, the side of that road. No, a lot of ideas. They died at your house. They died at many Good. restaurants. They just kept dying. Mm. And so yeah. I figured if I pitched something that wouldn't die and was immortal, then maybe you would you would latch on. You see how I made that segue? You see how I <laughs> made that kind of dead? There you go. You didn't think I was capable of being that, that nimble. But yeah, I've been drinking water. I'm hydrated today. So go ahead. I get past vampires. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, all right. And then over dinner, he throws in and and like in multiple, you're right. It was multiple dinners. Yeah, he would he would talk about Philadelphia, and, and then I would gradually start getting more and more excited. Uh, and then he would throw in the founding fathers part of the conversation, and it would just be like I'd be like, no, yeah, cool. What? 
<laughs> and then, well, and, and the thing is, I've been traumatized by you saying no to me so much that when you said <laughs> yes, I didn't believe it. I thought it was a way to get out of that booth. So when you said the thing, when you just said you like you get more and more uh, excited. I'm like, how do you go from zero with no excitement to more excited when you're at zero constantly? But, <laughs> but you have figured out a way. So go uh, continue. I did. I try I did. to keep jumping in, but this is the trauma that's talking. And then Rodney pitched the, the like the best pitch that had come, which he said it's like Hamilton meets Dracula meets Sanford and Son. Like, and from that point, I was like, I still, every time he would say founding father, I would kind of tune out, but I'm like, I, you know, it, it sounds interesting. Then I read the first script and every element was there. And I'm like, and so there's, there's just something, you have some interesting pitches, <laughs> some interesting ideas. And they all and, sound, they all and, sound bad in my head when I'm saying them to you. And <laughs> look on your face. Always looked like this is the silliest shit I've ever heard in my life. And then I'm There's so the much of the time that it's the silliest up. shit I've ever and, heard. And then I, and then I see it in the up. And then I start like, oh, uh, well, you know, and then this happens. And then Jason, 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 say, <laughs> this, hey, 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 wake up. Get him another drink. Okay. <laughs> and then I just keep pitching. And then when you see the script, you go, oh, okay, yeah, man, this is really great. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I've spent hundreds of dollars and a whole lot of alcohol to try to keep your attention. And it's not the easiest thing in the world. But continue, I'm sorry. I, keep I, feel, it like, I, don't know what it I is. feel like the learning curve should be like, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't spend hundreds of dollars and go out to that. I should just write the script and give it to Jason. Well, you, but here's the thing. <laughs> You, you've been such a diva along the way. And it's been so difficult to get you to say yes to anything. I've been a diva. And now you say yes. Now it's easier to get you to say yes. You know, once this happens, then I can get you to say yes. But before that, oh, yeah. my God. I was, the you know, asking you to go to the prom, and you just kept saying no. And it's just you know, yeah. week, week after week after week. So, yes, it would be cool if I had the time. If I had the time to just write the script ahead of time, uh, you know, I would. But you seem to like the pitches, the pitch pages when I put the pitch pages together as well. So yeah. it sort of works. The, uh, the, one, of the, one of the things that, <clears throat> that I focus on that, that tends to stand out more in, in my work is the emotional aspect. It's, it's like panel to panel, faces, hands, things like that. Action stuff is really fun, but it's those those details, those human details. And that's the thing. Like, your pitches are so sometimes outlandish. And then when you see these beautiful fucking details that Rod, like, Rodney can come up with something so absurd and then outlandish show you absurd. how he leads you there in I'm such so a – not absurd in a bad way. Uh, like, like, no, absurd in a good way. Like, you know, yeah. so <laughs> – Ah. Then inevitably he's going to then show you why your scoffing was so dumb because he's going to show you these wonderful, subtle details that get you there. That makes sense. And then you're like, well, shit. okay. Cause this is wonderful. <laughs> so um, I will take it, you know, in the arc of low self-esteem, I will take outlandish, absurd and wonderful. You know, and three Those are the structure. things I love. <laughs> and the three act structure, I will end up with wonderful. Hopefully, the audience will stay for outlandish and absurd to get to wonderful. But okay. But the uh, but after after Philadelphia, um, the the sci fi story and and a couple of the other things that we're working on, like now it's kind of like Rodney comes like, hey, I've got a a sci fi thing in this. I'm like, mm -hmm. let's hear it. I mean, I was gonna, like, let's hear it is. Almost pointless because I, I was just to just say yes anyway. Like what you what you've already done on Philadelphia. Like I've already. It's it's lovely to be friends and a fan <laughs> of someone, and especially that you're working with. And so each issue, I, I just become more and more a fan. And then I get to like the sci-fi thing that we're gonna do. <clears throat> we have two other projects that are in the works, uh, and yeah, it. it it definitely took a little bit to kind of raise the 
took a lot. Took a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it took a lot. I don't know if a little bit would be exactly how I would describe it because, you know, it was a lot of frustration. Because what I would do is I would practice my pitch to you, just like to a network, like I'm trying to sell a TV show. It's like, all right, and this restaurant that we go to, I know the uh, the waiter. And I would say, all right, you got to get him a little, you know, give him, don't water it down too much. Just make sure you get him nice and loose because I'm about to pitch. And nothing, you know, for the first three years, nothing worked. I got no so much. It was like, it was easy. Like I expected it. You know, <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So that these two guys, no, no, I don't, I don't see it. Uh, no, 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 no. So there you I go. don't remember. I mean, but obviously, it worked because yes, it worked. It worked. I have high blood pressure and um, <laughs> trauma, and my self esteem is shot. And I may, I'm in therapy right now. But yes, it worked. It worked. I'm very proud of what we've done. But yeah, it was. It, was, it wasn't easy. Wasn't no. easy. Wasn't Nothing easy. good is ever easy. That's true. <laughs> it's true. And, and the thing is, you're such a classical <clears throat> artist, and you know, I always say in these other uh, these other podcasts and interviews and stuff that I do about the book, you're not like an artist. You're like a director. Like when I look at the book. It almost feels like a storyboard. It almost feels like um, it feels like it's the the well. I guess it actually is. It's the um, launching pad to the next iteration of what it's what it could possibly be, and uh, which is beautiful. So for me, I try to push you to draw things that I want to see, just as a fan as well. Like um, that one panel again. The one that I keep coming back to is the heaven and hell one with Sangster in the middle, uh, the one that I wanted to be a t-shirt, but no one agreed with me, um, that I, I was like, this has to be a splash page. And, you know, lo and behold, I think it was a two-pager or something. Or something it was like a two-pager. Yeah, and I was like, all right, this is beautiful. And, you know, I try to find those things that I want to see the way I believe the fans would because of what you do so well. The class, the stuff that's on your walls, and the classical stuff that you do, you know, it's like I, that thing. I try to inspire that thing through the writing to get you that, not just to do a comic book or a graphic novel or whatever you want to call it. It's like I want to see the best of um, the stuff that I dig, you know. So absolutely, <clears throat> I think uh, if 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 Rodney and I tend to have any kind of patting each other on the back, it's like. I, every time I get a script, I, I will always comment on some level that now I have, like, I love Rodney's words, like, and I tend to have to, like, now he, we tend to raise the bar for each other, uh, I think. Like, every time I get a script, I'm like, I'm going to blow this out of the water because, like, this isn't, like, um, I've worked on books in the past that have been, you know, I've, I've polished a lot of turds in my career. But, um, yeah, this one is, uh, you know, anything I do with Rodney, like, it's just one of those where as upsetting as, as he can be as, a, as an individual, <laughs> I absolutely, anytime I read that man's words, I'm like, God damn it. that's lovely. It, it is, it's, like, it's like the work is our child and we would have gotten a divorce a long time ago if we yeah. didn't have this child. And we keep having children. And we keep having <laughs> children. We keep having children. And yeah. the work keeps us together. Because we would have been fighting a long time ago. Because you got that Midwest in you where you'll take a swing at me no matter how big I am, especially when you get a little lick in you. And I have this thing where I have no patience. I have absolutely <laughs> no patience whatsoever. So and he hate and he has all the patience and he's relaxed and he's Jason, he's got a vibe. It's like jazz when you're around him. And, you know, so we figure out a way to make this thing work. But it's the work. And I know he cusses me out. I know in his text, if you could read his text to me, I know he's called me everything. And I actually would just say it, but he's a, <laughs> he's a lot more of a gentleman than I am. And then I see the art, and I'm like, cause if you can see the art to issue seven, and it's right here in front of me, I can't show it to you, but it's right here, it's within arm's grasp. It's so beautiful that it's like it's hard to stay mad at him, 
you know, and I won't <laughs> say that. Like, and I'm sure there are other people like to be mad at you too. But I want to be mad, and the art is so good that I can't stay mad. So there you go. Every every issue I text Rodney that holy shit, I've got to raise the bar and make uh and 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 draw worth your words, and he always responds <laughs> because typically by the time an issue comes out, we're mad at each other. Oh, yeah. Well, and so were... by the time an issue comes out, I will always, always get a text that says the work is so beautiful, it's hard to stay mad at you. <laughs> it is, it is absolutely and I'm like there's, there's if if anybody dives into if you believe in astrology at all or anything like that, it might also come down to like Rodney and I share the exact same birthday, not the year, uh, but we a do. day. And I feel like we do. We're basically our, like we fight with mirrors quite a bit when we talk to each other. <laughs> like, what we, we do kind of have a lot of the same things, and yes. we both fire off, and we both figure it out. We, uh, Every time I yeah. get an idea that I think is a good Rodney Jason idea, I go, shit. Now I gotta push it. <laughs> now I gotta talk to him more. I, and, I, I, and, I, and I pick up I actually pick up a pen and I go, do I really want to write? How bad do I want this to come out? All right, man. And I write something and then I text it's like Jason, I got an idea. And then he'll say, Oh, that's it. And then I start pitching from there. Well, I don't really see it. <laughs> okay. That means I got to put more words in. Uh, I put more words down. All right. I guess that could work. Oh, no shit. I thought about it. it could. Anything could work. You could have a super dog. Like, so, True. So, hey, anything could work. So then I sit down and I fully make a thing. And then he goes, oh, yeah, this is lovely. This is wonderful. I love this. This is great. And I'm thinking... Do you realize that you whooped my ass for like a month and a half to get me to this point? And so we go. have a similarity where our finished product, like so we kind of need. I I did Ape Sapien with with Mignola and Dark Horse. I almost lost that gig because I kept showing them my pencils, like my my early like this yes. is this is what I intend, and they're like I don't see it. I wait then I had to know. ink the goddamn thing, and then they were like, oh. And yeah. when you sent me that first thing that looked like I did it, and I said, This is what, and you were like, and like, because you're talking to you, you're not thinking about me, that I know nothing <laughs> of any of this. I can't draw. I really, I draw like I just had a story. <laughs> and he shows me like those drawings. Oh man, this is going to be so great. Look. And <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> my my thumbnails and pencils are, are ridiculous. And he, see, and he sees it all. He sees it done, but he didn't send it to me done. He sent it to me with a couple stick figures and a, and a, some red crayon. And I'm like, I have no idea what this is. And so one time I did the same thing. I was like, you know, before I uh, spell check or anything and just the rough idea. And he shot it back to me so fast, like, you know, why am I doing this? I don't understand why I'm investing my time. You realize I'm a busy man. I'm Jason Scott Alexander. I got shit to do. And it was uh, never, never. never. Yeah, <laughs> he's, a bad, he's a deep, he's an artist. He's an artist. Okay, I'll just let you know, he's an artist. <sighs> it's true. We, yeah. we, we are we are very similar. We and we hate it. <laughs> it ain't easy. I swear we to hate God, working it. with ourselves. I don't know. I don't know if there's an intervention or a class we could go to. Marriage counseling. <laughs> if you know, like uh, uh, I don't know if yeah. Stan Lee and Jack Kirby had this problem and they went and talked to somebody. We can find that person so we can sit down and you know try to make this thing work because you drink and I eat. So you know those two. Maybe if we if we both drank or we both ate, you know, there's there's I guess they're pros and cons. We could we could make brilliant stuff and both die of gluttony. There you go. Oh man, please! I have by the third arc of uh, of Philadelphia, I have diabetes and gout, and like, I know they cut your foot off Friday, Rodney. But can you get this? Uh, can you get book twelve in? Oh, yeah. But yeah, by the end of the third arc, I'll at least be. Healing from my first heart attack and then coming back from. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, 
<laughs> good we take that month off between arcs. It's good that that month I do. I meditate. I talk to people. And uh, you know, I get my self-esteem yeah. back. And then it's yeah. like, okay, let's dive back into this again. And then it usually is a text. So how's it looking on that uh, uh, book seven? How's, yeah. it, how's it going? How, and that's the nut. That's the first nudge, you know. And and then I'm like, oh, it's going great, Jason. Then I have to find something. What about that thing you were going to do? We do that a lot. We do this a lot of passive aggressive fighting too. When I, I ask know if Rodney's going to be mad, he's going to ask me where I am on some other project yeah. we haven't talked about for a minute. But he needs something. But I was thinking about it. just to hold over. We haven't talked about it, I'm assuming that it's already being done. But that assumption makes an ass out of me for make for assuming. <laughs> we we get it done. We do. That's what man. inevitably it comes out. It, it's in a store and, and someone buys it. With with all yeah. of the fucking chaos that happens as we make this thing like as the book gets starts getting finished pages start turning in uh rodney has to start editing bait word balloons based on uh which i really love by the way he doesn't just write the script turn it in there you go like he looks at the the lettering and then he's uh, i get mad because he starts and i appreciate it but he's like you know the pictures tell this like the pictures like but I tell him like I and so he starts cutting words and cutting narration. I'm like, no, I love, I drew this based on your narration. But but see, uh, this is where that came from. When I remember, I've turned in my first comic strip for Falcon, and um, I the the note that came back was, "This is ponderous. There's so many <laughs> words we can't see the arc," and. Which was crushing to me <laughs> because I thought every word mattered. It was only like four or five hundred thousand of them. And <laughs> I learned that you can actually say less, you know, and I started to edit, 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 edit. And, you know, I think it's actually a good thing. And, you know, as I've done it more, I've learned to say more with less. Uh, but in the beginning, it was like, no, this needs to be said. That needs to be said. I have to say all of the words that, you know, and, you know, it's something that comes with experience. But I want people to see your art. I want people to see how beautiful it is. And that's not going to happen if I'm just talking for the sake of talking. Well, we should do. And um, <clears throat> I'm going to start brainstorming live on YouTube. But uh, the. Uh... What we should do is also like they did back in the uh, Sandman Vertigo days. I would really love to include one of your scripts because even even though Rodney is going to cut words and and cut stuff because the art tells a story and he wants it all to be balanced, uh, it's his words. His words are there's a lot of words in the actual script, and I love those because and I tell him I was like if you want to just write like have at it because the more information you give me the more information i can put into these characters and these figures uh so i'd love to actually you know we need to put a script of yours in the back I, of them. I'm happy to i've started to especially in the second arc add more notes and thoughts and things beyond just the um the bare minimum like in television and film um some guys are more prosy but you try to uh because you want to keep your page count at a good number and still get all the information in, you just get right to it and it's the bare minimum. And with this, I've started to relax a little bit more and add some elements into uh, personalizing. I think I describe stuff a little bit more. I actually talk to you a little bit more in it. Think this uh, examples of things, not just the bare yeah. minimum of uh, action and dialogue, just a little bit more. I remember seeing an Alan Moore script. I had never seen a comic book script before when I started. And it was like a hundred pages. It was, was it the was, first one you saw was an Alan Moore script. Yeah, that was the first. Oh, script Jesus. I, I like, well, Cause I'm a huge, uh, literally and figuratively, um, I'm a huge Al Swamp Thing fan. So I would, uh, do research. I never fancied that I would write comics. Um, even after I got into TV and film, I wanted to, but I didn't know the path that you get from A to B. So in case I ever decided to jump in, I figured that I would do a little bit of research. And so my two favorite writers at the time were, uh, and still are, Alan Moore and Neil Gaiman. 
so I would track down scripts and um, I'd search the internet. I think I bought one on eBay one time uh, for Miracle Man 13, I think it was. And um, I would just study it. And it was so much that it was intimidating. And then when I got the Marvel assignment and they sent me a couple of scripts, it was way different. It was, uh, <laughs> it was it, you know, it was more punctuation than it was words. It was, wasn't a whole lot. <clears throat> and I was like, okay, I need to find a middle ground here. And my first few Falcons, I say, were kind of clunky, to say the least, because I hadn't made a relationship between words and art. I didn't know how they worked in the same way like I developed a rhythm with TV and film. I hadn't done that with, uh, with comics. And that uh, Lando and Falcon and Queen Credible were great, like, proving grounds to be able to continuously. That was the thing, you know. The more you work, the better you get. So yeah. doing it over and over and over again and even practicing on my own and even in my own work, <clears throat> I have like sample scripts that my agents have when they send out, you know, for uh, shows that I want to be on. I'll continuously edit them and go over them to make them better as I get better as a writer. So <clears throat> I try to do the same thing in comics, too. But we do so much together that I'm constantly writing. So I don't have, you know, I don't have the time to go back, but except like what you said, there's a process where I think the script for issue seven, I went over about 10 times. Like I turned in that initial one and then I'd go back a few days later after I'd done something else and my head was clear and look at it and try to refine it and then keep refining it. And then like you said, in the lettering process, I will edit the physical lettering uh, as well. So, for me, uh, anything that's good about it as far as the part that I do comes down to going over it and editing as much as possible. Do you like having that extra time on the, the editing process? Or yes. like when film, you, I assume you still keep going over it and over it before you turn in a script for film. But is the script basically when it goes to film, is it gone? Or do you still get a chance to tweak and play? when well, you're doing a TV series? It's according to what it is. Like when I was doing sitcoms and you were doing one a week, you really didn't have a lot of time, whether it was good, bad, or someplace in between, you were shooting something on Wednesday, mm -hmm. uh, Wednesday through Friday. So in drama, because uh, that's mostly what I've been doing for the past decade, um, it's a different process. It's almost like film in a way. Um, like in writing a movie, there's a constant process that you're going through of uh, editing, even when you're on set, you're still editing because the actors, um, <clears throat> the actors have their input and other producers have their input. So even when you're on the stage and you're doing the thing, you're constantly going through that process. In sitcoms, it was much more, um, you might do that with jokes, but not so much with the story. Because you got How does that feel when the other creative elements, whether the director or an actor, um, how does how does that either feel or how do you work with it when someone else has their input? Um, um, it's according to, I mean, by the time it gets to the actors and directors, it's gone through a process. Um, like, for instance, uh, the show, the Lakers show that I'm doing right now for HBO, when we turn a script in, um, that's the beginning of the process. And we've gone on it. We've gone over it. A bunch of times already but hbo weighs in um other producers weigh in and we're constantly tinkering with it and making it you know better and better and better and then in some cases uh you have a table read where the actors read it out loud and then you get to hear it again and then you go through another process of editing and then actors may have uh questions about their character or what they're doing and then uh there's that aspect of it. And then when it finally gets on um, on its feet and you're actually shooting the thing, there's another editing process. So it's a constant state of change and you get used to it. You, you don't necessarily, it's not about taking it personally. Um, you know, you think that process helped that? Like helped you like on, on that level, like where it, it's such a, there's such a step process and there's stuff uh, collaborative and change. Do you think coming from film like makes it, made it basically easier for you to take edit like and well yes very I mean, I, very little <laughs> prima donna like kind of a thing like yes gonna... it was it was different with comics because i was so emotionally connected 
to comics like the first time out. I loved them so much. I loved the community so much that I didn't want to make a mistake. And it was the first time that I'd written, I'd written something more from my head than my heart. Mm -hmm. And I, I approached it like a TV show in the sense of I would ask the artist what he thought. And I ask you sometimes, hey, I've got this idea or I want to do this thing because I'm used to doing that. I'm used to talking to someone else rather than just like you said, firing off a script and then artwork comes back and you make a thing. I'm used to the back and forth of it um, yeah. because of TV and film um, more so than anything else. And I had to learn even there's a culture to making comics. And if you don't know what that culture is, you know, some people are able to just jump in. It took me a minute to learn the entire culture of what it's like to work with an artist. Again, what it's like to um, see words. And, and another thing, too, it's like writing to the voice of the character more so than my voice. Yeah. Um, I had to get me out of the way. And again, in Falcon, I wasn't writing necessarily to Sam Wilson's voice in the beginning. I was writing what I thought would work or what I thought was good. And I had to um, figure that process, that part out of as well. So it's all learning. It's all evolving. It's all, what it, you know, that stuff. But collaboration is always a good thing for me. For the, the process of writing, um, <clears throat> to the... The immediacy, uh, like you said, like the, the, the <laughs> levels of people that are going to see a script for film mm -hmm. and the levels of changes. Uh, do you like that process or is there, do you like the process of comics where it's basically you and me and like then it's on the shelf? Like I do now. In the beginning, it was terrifying because I didn't have a reference point. Mm -hmm. Like the only reference point I would have was Twitter when people would tell me how much they hated it. <laughs> I uh, Falcon talking about it. Yeah, yeah Falcon. Not, not so much disruption about, in Falcon. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Josh Kassar, God bless him. You know, it's gonna be okay, man. I'm like, I don't know. Uh, and, and, uh, yeah, that was my only reference. I don't know if this is good. I don't know if it's bad. I don't know anything. And that was like a, being in a cave by yourself and not knowing if you're gonna make it out. What's going on on the other side of life? Um, it was difficult in the beginning. And then yeah. once your confidence grows and once you have more faith in the thing that you're making, I think the, the beautiful thing about Philadelphia was it's not so much interpreting something that people already have a reference point to. Like, like people already have an idea in their heads who Falcon is, who Lando is. Not so much Quinn Credible because that was a new thing as well. But yeah. those other guys are firmly established. So in the Lando world, it was – is it Billy D. Williams or is it Donald Glover's version? Um, and I was doing Donald Glover's version. So even if people wouldn't so much critique it in the same way of, I like the Billy D. version more so than the Donald Glover version, but it wasn't that I wasn't nailing the voice of, you know, the Donald Glover version. Um, yeah. That would be the argument. With Sam Wilson, it was, um, this isn't my Sam Wilson. And this, it would be a personal thing or, you know, it, it was, I, some of the dialogue was like TV dialogue. It wasn't so much yeah. the thing from how we do what we do here. We kill Adelphia because I thought of it and I sort of had a feeling for who everybody was. I knew what the rhythm was and I could dictate what the rhythm was. And I'm introducing it to the world more so than ha interpreting what someone else created. So it was a different process that's actually helped me when I go back to the mainstream books as well, that now I have a little bit more of a reference point. And again, experience. Experience trumps all. Do, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, do you, um, do you like doing the creator own stuff? Uh, I do. More than franchise or? <clears throat> it's according to what it is, but still the creator own thing, especially for like what, you know, what well, the stuff that we're doing, both Philadelphia and the extensions of the things that come off from all of that. Um, there's a tone I'm trying to strike just personally with things I've never seen before. Like I've always wanted to do Philadelphia from a personal place because a lot of um, urban horror has been kind of campy. And yeah. 
uh, I wanted to do a serious take that has some humor in it, but still is true to genre in the way that I first was introduced to it. Um, the Hammer films and uh, other stuff, Salem's Lot, all these other things. Um, and I'd never seen that treatment and that tone. And quite frankly, that respect uh, by and large for you know the urban aspect of putting genre in there. I mean, Jordan Peele does a yeah. great job with it. And there are other people and other things that have inspired me for sure. But on mass, I hadn't seen a lot of it uh, anywhere. And I wanted to be a part of a period of time where um, I could make something that felt like it was um, giving some degree of reverence to this thing that I love so much. Yeah. And it, and it's, yeah, it's yeah. so easy to jump on one side or the other. Like, you can jump in preachy or you can jump in campy or whatever. Like I, I love these scripts because they were just great horror scripts. And you and I have a lot of the same love of horror. Like the stuff I get, you know, this isn't, um, you know, what if Lobo was an, em you know, an emo kid, like blah, blah. This is like classic, like Salem's Lot. This is like, and this is the stuff that you reference that I'm like, I get to draw. <laughs> and I'm like, so it, it's, yeah. And then trying to show it, you know, in, in different ways and different kinds of stories, like, you know, you don't get much different in Philadelphia. And even in those references that you just made, you know, when you say Salem's Lot, oftentimes I'll say, like in Salem's Lot, like <laughs> in whatever, in the script, I'll say, you remember how I, I think um, there's this, in one of the scripts, I think it's in nine, I say a stagecoach, kind of like in the um, Peter Cushing. Yeah. Christopher Lee uh, thing. It's like kind of like that one. And yeah. because I remember those films and I love them so much that I'm still doing an homage to all of that stuff at the same time, trying to tell something that's new uh, in the way that I would tell it, but still under it is all of that stuff that sort of fired my imagination when I was a kid and made me want to be a part of this world. Absolutely. Uh there's not many more minutes. Is there anybody with questions that they might want to ask? Oh, somebody's listening to this, Mister. And you, <laughs> the hell? I would have wore a different shirt. It's just a FaceTime conversation. Yeah, I thought I was seeing <laughs> you talking. The hell? Um, are you are you working today? Of course. I mean, I stopped working um, about an hour ago. Um, but yeah, I'll be working. I got to finish. I promised you two and three. I won't say of what. So I <laughs> two and then three. <clears throat> Did image Who's... cover the tab? No, this was all Rodney's investment. <clears throat> if, you're, if you're talking about the tab of like me and him meeting and restaurants and all of that, that's, yeah, that's, no, how, that's how Rodney does business. <laughs> I, wish, I wish somebody paid that tab. Uh, no, no, no one. This is all Rodney's tab. Jason is a very expensive date. He's not coming out. He's not coming out for free. I don't think I've ever had a time. Hey, let's just meet, go for a walk. I've always had to feed him and water him and everything. You got to keep me alive. <laughs> yeah. Keep me going. Try to keep you engaged. You know, you're a pretty girl. Pretty we're, we're pretty much on there now. Like we're, yeah, we're, yeah. But, uh, you can still leave me at any moment. I still fear that you can leave me for somebody prettier. Now it's like it's like a marriage. It's just more expensive to leave than it is. <laughs> very, 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 very true. Very true. Might as well just stay with it. Top three yeah. fictional detectives of all time. Oh man. Um I'm gonna say John Schaff, even uh John Schaff was my favorite, the first one. Uh, the Gordon Parks one, um, Sherlock Holmes. I like Perry Mason only because I'm watching the show on um, on HBO right now. Um, I'm going to say those three off the top of my head, and then when I get off of here, I'll think of three more. And go, shit! I wish I could have given you three other ones. Uh, if I um, and I know I'm not remembering right, was. Uh, was Kolchak, was he a detective? Or was he, he, was, a he was a journalist. Kolchak was a journalist and he became sort of an investigative reporter because of the nature of the crime. So the ah. cops would never really um, 
investigate like if it was a murder and he thought it was a vampire, they just would chalk it up to there's a murder and it just so happened that a person had bite marks on their neck. And Kolshak would be like, no, 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 there's something else going in. He would dig deeper. So he was sort of a detective in verb, but an yeah. investigative reporter. I guess there's detective aspects to that. If they'd yeah. asked me that, Kolshak is one of the reasons why Philadelphia exists because as a kid, I love the two movies of the week uh, written by Richard Matheson, the late, great Richard Matheson. Um, they were like uh, everything to me. I couldn't wait until I got them on VHS and then eventually um, the DVDs. And nobody will watch them with me. No one that I know. <laughs> like none of my children care. And, um, <laughs> and you know, I've got the comic books and nobody will read them. And it just to them it feels old, and which is by proxy saying I'm old, which is offensive to me. It's almost <laughs> like my ideas are outlandish and absurd. And but I find a way to engage them on the new stuff. And there you go. <laughs> we go well, through phases. We like, do. We go sometimes through. talk every day. We sometimes hate each other and talk, you know, twice uh, a month. <laughs> yes. And it was funny a couple of weeks ago, he sent me a text and said, since we're not talking very much these days. And because we <laughs> had to talk for like a week and a half, it's like, I just can't talk to him right now. I just don't have the bandwidth to deal with Jason. And um, then we start talking again, and we'll have this flurry of euphoria where we'll talk all the time. And it'll just keep going. And then it'll be somebody will piss somebody off. I'm very sensitive, so I get mad very easily. Um, but it's like a child. It's very petulant. You know, when I get mad, I pout. And then I pout, and I don't want to talk to Jason. And I don't like Jason very much. And I need Jason because he can draw pretty pictures, but I don't like him. <laughs> and, and so I just keep going. And I say, God bless Nicole. Um, for being able to deal with him. I don't know how I could do that every day. You know, that's a hell of a way to go through life. I don't know what she did in the past life to deserve that as something that she should have to deal with, but she does. And then there you go. There was no need for any of that. There was no, there was no Excuse me, I was in an outlandish, absurd moment. It was in a good way. This I know, and then, but it's going to end up wonderful when it's over. But for right now, I'm still stuck in a place. So, <laughs> thank you, question. Do uh, I have a plan in the next future? Not in the near, well, uh, this, if I kill Jason and we're in jail, I doubt that I'm going to be able to do this on my own. But I have at least five arcs in yeah. my head planned out uh, and a potential six that is completely absurd for real, no joke that I just pitched to Jason the other night. Uh, he put a little heart on it, and sometimes he'll do that just to make peace like you do with your comic wife. Uh, I don't know if he really believes it. <laughs> you know, it's something you do. You know, so you can either be right or you just keep the marriage going. So he'll say, oh, perfect, great, all right, honey. And just to kind of brush me off. So I don't know which one it is, but for right now, for right now, there's five solid ones that go along with everything that we've done up until this point. Then there's this other one that kind of jumps the shark, like when Pinky Duscadero on Happy Days literally jumped the shark and because Happy Days was technically over, but they kept making shows. Yeah. Uh, that's sort of the that six idea where people will hate, what the hell is this? Who came up with this idea? And I'll say, Jason. <laughs> Burn it down. Burn it all. <laughs> wow. Who came up with this idea? Why I even like this book in the first place? You bastards. Yeah. yeah. Hey. That's how we do it. Uh, uh, Kill is uh, uh, the only ongoing or the ongoing thing. And then there's another project that's uh, on potentially ongoing. Um, but then, yeah, I think the sci-fi thing that we have is, is fairly, uh, it's finite. Um, the six issue thing, uh, you know, there's always potential for, you know, sequels and things like that, but uh, ongoing, uh, me and Rodney, uh, Rodney and I, the Kill Delphi is pretty much what we're, we're doing. That's the marriage. That's the glue. That's the baby. That's the thing that keeps us together is Kill Delphi. It's, it's a lovely baby. 
It is. It's a very pretty baby for both of us being so ugly. Um, it's it is, true. And, you hey, know, you guys, not, check out the Philadelphia store. Buy a T-shirt. <laughs> yeah. Eventually, I'll have the link on my website, too. Uh, it's coming. <laughs> you got Nicole laughing. He's not... He, 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 it's She's coming. dealing with me, so you know it's going to take her. <laughs> Nicole is working in the antebellum south right now, working 24 hours a day. I feel bad for Nicole. Uh, Nicole, nobody, there's, there's got to be some laws or OSHA or something that a person shouldn't have to go through what Nicole is going through. My sip, every night when I pray, because I pray, it's a new thing I started. I pray. I pray for the kids. And, and then the elders and Nicole, because I know what Nicole is going through right now. I know it's always bad. When it's going to be a tell-all book one day. She'll be bald and, <laughs> and high blood pressure. And she'll probably stab somebody and be on a Dateline episode. And Keith Morrison will be like, why would you kill everybody? And then I will be the one. They'll interview me. And I was like, if you work with Jason, and you would understand. You'd be killing people, too. It's not the easiest job ever. It's a very difficult. It's job. just the most rewarding. That's how most serial killers think. Like they did you a favor by <laughs> killing you, they took you to heaven. They did a, they did you a favor. You know, I, I killed I'm you. Doing God's work. Yeah, I'm doing God's work by touching more people to heaven, populating heaven. Uh, that's sort of how I do it with Jason. Again, I pray for all the time. I tell. You know, and, and the kids say, who is Nicole? And I just like, shut up and just say amen. Because if you knew what Nicole was going through, you would be praying for it. You know how you feel sorry for those little stray animals that are running around? That's kind of like Nicole. That's kind of what Nicole is going through. She needs a better home. She needs some place where she'll be cared for and nurtured. That's not working at JSA Studios, whatever. You know, Jason changed his email the other day, and I got the I sent it to the wrong email. And oh, I was chastised. Could you please use my my correct email when you send me things? Okay. Do you see? For eleven years, I've been sending them to Jason's other email, and now I said I can't send it there anymore because we have a new email. Even though the other one exists, I can't send it there anymore because I have to use the other one. You just complained. I just sent it to Nicole. Me. I actually like. I wish Nicole could draw. I wish she could. <laughs> She'd be. It'd be. We'd be doing our own books. Uh yes. Uh yes. Anything that's classical. Um, anything that's a classic moment that I think can take advantage of. Um, again. You know, his style, Jason's style. I went to the Sistine Chapel and um, I was looking up at the paintings and I was thinking of things. It was weird because I think I actually texted you. I said, you know, I see so much stuff that I want to include in the book somehow, some way. Um, and I always try to figure out ways uh, to get classic moments in, in art in the book so that Jason can interpret it in his way. So yes, there, there are a lot of specific things that uh, come to mind that come I, from other places. Yeah, I'll, I'll tend to get something in the script that just, you know, and I realize that, you know, and Rodney says he's, you know, in some scenes he writes to my strengths of, you know, this kind of emotional kind of side of, but the, uh, uh, oh, what just happened? Yeah, we switched. I don't know what happened. <laughs> now I guess I'm out of husband now. <laughs> well, well, we're going to talk about film day. stuff now. We're going to yeah, talk about a whole yeah. other level of <laughs> Yeah, because we just switched. That actually scared the shit out of me. I just want you to know. <laughs> I just want you to know. You know, I actually do have high blood pressure, so I didn't know if I, this was it. And everything just switched around, and I was like, this could be the end. But, yeah. Okay, I can see you over there, and I'm over here, and we're good. So, How you doing? Yeah, it's good. The, you know, but no, it, and then sometimes, yeah, when Rodney sees a certain thing that he wants, uh, like I've gotten texts that, what was it, issue three? He's like, you think you could pull this off? And it was the uh, like a time, the timeline that, that you see of kind of John Adams moving walk through the decades. Yeah, the walk um, Yeah, and like so, I you know I tend to like there's sometimes he's like I write to your strengths, or sometimes he's like 
do you like this? And then there's sometimes he says, like, do you think you can pull this off? I like all of those texts when they come in. I'm just like, ooh, what's happening? Like, it's either, like, something that's right up my alley or something I'm really going to have to, like, stretch. You know, Remember I, that I like one it. artist that uh, I love so much that said, that's not how John Adams looks. What? No. Remember, there was one artist that um, – I can't give it away completely, but there was one artist that um, wanted to interpret John Adams, I guess, in the classic way that John Adams was with the hair uh -huh. and all of that. And uh, he hadn't seen the walk through time and all of that. Uh, I think you know what I'm talking about. I should yeah. text it to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, <laughs> yes. You remember? Yes. I'm still paying for that. I'm still kind of paying for that. Because I wanted to do something, and it said, "Oh, we shouldn't let you have anything to do with the art, Rodney." Like from this, point I am on. never going to let you not pay for that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> if he can find, ladies and gentlemen, America, if he can find one thing on me, I will never live it down. If I make a mistake, whoo, man! Oh, He's look at you that talking that. in the singular. Like Rodney's going to make a mistake. Well, I, I try. <laughs> see, here's the thing. Because I am the way that I am, which is a blessing to most, um, I tend to think it through before I actually send the thing because I know I'm being scrutinized. So I don't allow you the space to come back and say, oh, like when you messed up and you did that, <laughs> you did that in the beginning. You did that for like two and a half books. And I say, all right, I can't take this shit. I have my self-esteem is way too low and I'm way too insecure to deal with this shit on a regular basis. And because I still kind of don't know what I'm doing. And so now I think it way the way through. It, those gaps, remember how I used to answer you immediately? Via yeah. That? And now it'll be a day in between. I'm considering. I, I'm cussing and considering. I'm doing both of those. We, we Texting one another now, it's either like very easy. It's like, mm -hmm. how's it going? Going pretty good. <laughs> like anytime there's, well. anytime there's a significant question or there's a conversation, all of a sudden you see these gaps in the text. Oh yeah, and like whether it's you or whether he I says something, you, I'm like, I asked you go yesterday that you still have an answer. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> have an answer. No. And we're talking about other shit. Like you still, we're still talking. And I yeah. know I asked a question. That's me looking up at the text. Uh, like the whole world is a big text screen. And I know I asked the question. And you just don't <laughs> acknowledge that I even asked the question. I've I've acknowledged it. I've just not answered I'm not it. Yet. <laughs> Here, look. There's somebody yeah. else. Here. I see the words. <laughs> uh, uh, my favorite scene. Um, you can answer. Ooh. You know yours first before I go. Uh, my one of my absolute favorite scenes was, um, and and I, it's because I I love atmosphere. I, I like I like trying to make people cry in comics. Um, if you I love the same thing I pick, I'm gonna be mad. No, I don't think it will be. I think I like all the scenes with uh, Seesaw and his grandmother. That was what I was going to say. That was exactly We're what We're the I was same goddamn person. This is bullshit. I'm quick. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. Um, the reason that that is my favorite is because <laughs> it is actually true. I actually experienced that scene when my grandmother was passing away. And I had not that conversation, of course, because I'm not a vampire and I'm too big to float. But um, <laughs> that was actually the exchange I, when my grandmother was passing away. I had a similar, the, the substance and the emotions that were behind it were sort of what inspired the scene. But that was my favorite scene, um, that the bookends of those two were my favorites. Nice. They're, yeah. Nice portfolio. Oh, good. Um, that's it. You you endured me for free? an hour. Oh, God damn. For free. You for know, free. this is nothing. They say you pay for everything. And I'm sure I pay something. I'm a little less healthy now than I was when I started this. It's true. For having to talk to you. <laughs> uh, what, what, why we're streaming, I want to thank all of these guys uh, on Twitter. 
that, that keep promoting us and keep retweeting us and, and uh, the mayor of Philadelphia and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's my man. That's my man. We have a wonderful DM relationship too. Um, nothing freaky. We um, <laughs> we have, I we are so engaged. It's like man, the community in and of itself. I can always go on, and we just can start talking. They think I'm doing them a favor. They're actually doing me a favor. I man, I, it's something to do all the time. So my anxiety has some place to go. Nice. <laughs> Obviously, it can't come to you because you have very little compassion, as I'm sure when Nicole and I testified against you for something, yeah. you'll do something eventually. Um, she understands. It's true. It'll happen. Yeah, well, it's coming. It's a period of time. <laughs> that of time is coming. Uh, well, Philadelphia fans, you guys can go to Threadless. Can you put up the link? for? There we go. You guys can go to the store and buy tons of cool Philadelphia stuff. Uh, thanks, man. Thanks for coming on for my You're more than welcome, thing. Sir. You're more than welcome. Uh, uh, we'll we'll be talking tonight. We will. We will. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Be well. All right. Take it easy.
Hey, hey guys. Uh, thanks for coming back. I hope you guys uh, stuck around for the conversation between uh, me and Rodney Barnes. And um, <laughs> I'm still kind of recuperating. Uh, so let's get to portfolio reviews. Uh, we got six, uh, six portfolios, 10 minute reviews or less because I tend to talk fast. Um, and so I don't know, let's just get started. Um, Nicole's in the other room, so you're going to hear me say Nicole quite a bit when it comes like back and forth. Uh, so we're going to start off with, e is this, this is Eamon. Eamon? God, I love you guys' names. Uh, Eamon Wink Winkle. Nice. So what we're going to do is just kind of pan through the three images um, that were sent, and then we'll come back to the first one. And um, then I'll start chatting. Cheers, guys. So when you see me kind of looking that way, um, I'm looking at larger images of the artwork. So I can kind of be a little bit more particular. Uh, well, geez, that's lovely. Um, these are beautiful. Nicole, can we scroll through the three of them? Uh, one more time, yeah. Just kind of giving a, a vibe of things. Okay. Um, and come back to Miss Death. I love it. So, so there's there's no sequentials. So we're just going to dive in when it comes to you know art illustration that kind of a thing. Um, one, I just I like I have an instinct, you know, first and foremost to to dig it like like from across the room, from wherever, like I see the composition, I see the, the character, I see there's certain detail elements that, that at a distance, you know, and, and as a, at a quick look, I'm down. I'm like, oh, this is, this is right up my alley. Um, there's, there's, there's certain little, you know, uh, I see that the, the skulls all kind of have like their own vibe going on. They have this kind of gray, uh, this kind of gray tone to them, the, this texture. <sighs> And I, I like that they have that, but honestly, I would rather just see them a little bit more solid, uh, you know, throw in those black shadows that you have on her. There's almost too many of the white wrinkles, uh, the highlights happening, even in real life, if it's happening, you don't have to just abide by it. If you're looking at reference, um, you don't have to abide by, by every wrinkle and thing you see. If anything, sometimes that slows us all down. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, but so what we're looking like, it, it kind of gets a little bit, like I love around the knee. I love, you know, as we're going into the boot, I think that's cool. Um, what we're looking at though, what I'm looking at is, is near the waist, uh, whether, and the shirt and the waist, like we want to drop those things kind of into black. You give them that, that kind of weight and then it kind of balances all your light from up there. Um, so it's just a little, you know, we're all guilty of kind of over rendering or wanting to put all the cool stuff in. It's very difficult just to knock something into black, but often the the simplest stuff is 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 the most direct. Let's go to number two. I'm never not going to like a Joker picture. Um, there, there. I'm what I try to avoid to do is is reference or liken any artwork, most artwork to other artists or or you know inspirations or influence kind of a thing. There's a little bit that I see going on in here, but but going on to just straight art. Uh, there's so much about this drawing that I that I really really enjoy. Um, we get a little not. I mean, it should be loosey goosey around the hair and stuff like that, but it almost gets a little bit like sketchy, scratchy. Like like it's it's unintentional. It's more of like oh no hair. I know hair goes here. And so we're going to go like around the ear. I'm just thinking like, ch -ch 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 -ch. Um, and it's exhausting sometimes, but like when you get that face and you get these solid marks on these eyes and you get these teeth and all this other like beautiful stuff, it's hard to then like keep that same energy of focus and detail when it comes to the other stuff, especially when the other stuff should be lighter, shouldn't, shouldn't have as much weight. Uh, but that's where I typically will take a break uh, step away, 
uh, have a smoke, have a lunch, whatever. And then you come back and then you kind of have this refreshed energy to be like, all right, cool. Now I'm going to make this hair like work, like just be a little bit more solid, make it pop just a touch more with a little bit more attention. Um, I mean, that said, it's really only in the finishes that I feel like things get a little weak here. I think the, the drawing itself is solid and I really enjoy the, the face on this Joker. Uh, let's cut to this here. Last amazing piece of crazy darkness. I mean, Jesus. Um, just in the pure concept and, and idea of it, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. Um, I'm like, there's, there's, um, no matter what, you're going to get a reaction from this piece because so much of it works. So much, so much of it works in so many ways, uh, that I don't know. This might sound very strange. I don't know if you use reference or not. Um, but what I would say is that when I do an image like this, I, I love to just, you spend that first those first moments of going at it, go at it, like get those shapes in there, do the crazy shit, do the things hanging off the things. <laughs> like the spine is lovely. The concept is wonderful. And your weight is wonderful. Uh, the only thing that stops me is, is there's certain elements that I just don't believe. Uh, like the, the one leg that we see that we see the full leg, we get into these muscles near the top, or, or not near the top, apologies, near the knee, near the top of the knee. Um, between those and some of the other things, we just get a little bit less believable. We obviously have a light source coming down, but that would completely alter how we're seeing the ribs and the stomach based on the light source. So basically, what I'm saying is that your design is fantastic. Your rendering is awesome. Uh, but I would find reference then for like legs, find reference or, or shoot. Uh, I'm a big fan of, uh, of, of shooting your own or selfies and all that stuff. So even if your own, you know, reference that you never show anyone in your life is you like on, on all fours, hands and knees, you know, take that reference shot, see where those shadows lie, because that li little bit more of grounding in reality is going to make a piece like that not only freaky but frightening right now it's freaky you stumble upon this thing and you're like ah jesus look at all this stuff like it's just it's that's some scary stuff those are scary elements but once it's grounded and there's real shadow and there's that little sense more of believability then people come across that thing and be like oh fuck. then they're just you know then you scare them like it's the difference between being freaky and cool and something that genuinely makes you uncomfortable because you could potentially believe it. Um, lovely work, man. Thank you. Uh, let's head on to number two. Oh, wow. And again, we're going to go England. Thank you. Uh, we have, we kind of have the world today, I believe. Um, we have, uh, we have artists from Israel, Indonesia, Brazil, Ireland, and California. Uh, these are awesome. These are wonderful. Um, I'm okay. Predominantly, I, I, I tend to, when I first look at a page, if, if you had catch me kind of pausing for a moment is that I, I kind of, um, uh, beyond looking at like that first instinctual composition thing, I kind of try to figure out what, what medium it's done in. I don't know why it's just kind of a thing that I do. Uh, so that's, that's just why there's a, 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 a pause. Um, today with kind of all of our tight deadlines, I, I've still not been able to review the work before I review the work. So what you're getting is kind of a first, a first glimpse response. And so I'm just kind of following this storytelling leading into, um, what we have storytelling wise are, is, is definitely a confusion in the pan, in the first two panels. We have a woman looking into a, a, a bedroom and then 
she's closed the door and then looked behind her. The problem is, is that I think we have some interesting, weird angles, but we have the back. There's, there's definitely some storytelling and, uh, uh, flaws in this. I can dance around it all day, but um, my third glass of Jameson won't let me. So what we're looking at is like, I'm, I'm just a little confused as to what's happening between this closed door and then the door opens again. And then from what looks like the first panel to the fourth panel, we're in this, we're back in the room, except now she's either crouching or something and that, that the dresser is now above her head where it was below her elbow. Um, a kind um, the storytelling is just a little wonky. You want to, you, you uh, what you want to do honestly is just pretend that you were the reader, you know, like when you're looking at these pages, you want to not, the last thing you want to do is, is make the reader work, you know, it's obnoxious, but you got to draw these backgrounds. You know, you got to, you know, pull that camera back. I'm not like, oh, she's entering the room. She's shutting the, see, that's the problem. In, the, in, in this first sequence, I don't know if she's entering the room and shutting the door. Because then in the next panel, there's, she's just standing in a doorway where it's open. Uh, without words, I'm a little lost on this page. The words could change everything. It could be a narration heavy thing. But as a silent page, it doesn't quite work. Um, and that is not a flaw necessarily of the artist, because if it is a montage and things are, you know, like that, you know, you get it. But as just a straight sequence, I don't quite get what's happening in panel two, panel two through four. Um, the other ones I get, though, if, if, if I may you're missing the backpack in panel four and if the backpack falls off of her in panel five we need to see that we can't just have her sans backpack and then the backpack on the ground um we need to see it as obnoxious as that is you need to kind of bring that audience along with you. And our job as illustrators is to make that interesting, not boring or tedious. Um, and so oftentimes you just got to find a way to enjoy it yourself, drawing these same details over and over again. Um, how heavily do you rely on reference images to create your work? Um, that's funny. I can say a hundred percent and 50% because I, I like to use reference uh, on everything. I shoot reference for every panel or I find reference for every panel. So 100%, but once I have that reference, I only really wanna use about 50 of it. Like I wanna use it as a springboard. I, um, uh, I wanna be able to ground the artwork and the scene and the reality and the, and, and the details of reality. Um, but then I also want to use my own cartooning and imagination to exaggerate and push things and amplify things. If someone's mad, you want to make them furious. Uh, whether I'm shooting my own self for reference and you got to get over your own shit, or, or whether I'm shooting models, like it's the difference between like her and ah, like it's a whole different thing. You just got to cut loose and put everything in there. So everything I get from models and reference, I love. I love that grounding. I love. I love having everything based in reality. This is a model pose for well, everything. Um, and then I want to take that and then make it mine. I want to interpret it. Um, there was somebody said a long time ago, you know. Every, every story has been told. Uh, the only thing we have now is to, is to uh, kind of tell our own personal versions of that. Uh, back to, are we okay, Nicole? Yeah. Okay. Um, back to the, 
work at hand. The only sequentially, the only problem. No, I'm going to go into two problems. I'm sorry. Uh, we have a lovely establishing shot. This is this is nice. Like I'm there's there's no yeah there's no kidding around on that one. That's, that's some you know what you what I would have liked to have seen is in the left corner, bottom left corner of panel one. I would have loved to have seen the same door that she's walking into in panel two. There's always got to be a there, there should be a hint, whether it's emotional because you know it doesn't have to be a background thing or whatever. Panels have to lead into each other. Uh, walking down the street is fine. And if, if you don't want to put that door in panel one, you need to at least give us more of that street in panel two. Got to connect them. Got to still say that we're in the same world. We're in the same thing. Colors are, are very helpful, but they don't always work as far as a connector for sequential. Uh, so then we cut to this door and she's like gearing up, but you know, uh, 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 and then she's inside fine. We don't need to show the opening of the door in this whole process. She's inside. We see the door in panel two. We're back here in, in the panel four. The problem is, is like, then we're, we're back into another uh, thing where in panel four, we didn't see a staircase. We didn't see a curtain. Like there's nothing that brings us into the same room. Uh, and so it's just little sequential stuff. It's just little obnoxious, and, and I agree, obnoxious details that you want to kind of bring from panel to panel just to keep the reader, you know, it can be a beautifully rendered panel, but if the reader for a moment sees that beautiful panel and still is like, oh, wait, even has a brief moment of, are we in the same room still? You've taken them out. Like, think of it as filmmaking. Uh, you know, like, it doesn't take much to take you out of a movie. Bad sound design, bad whatever. It only takes that little bit of, like, as soon as you're questioning, not part of the story, not part of the element, as soon as you're questioning part of the art, like, wait, is this the same room? God damn it. Then the reader's out of it. Then the reader's questioning something else. Even if it's for a second, you just want to keep them in there as much as you can. Uh, let them question nothing. Let them just take the ride. So we have to put those background elements in that kind of lead us from panel to panel. On the third page, um, this, obviously we're gonna go more surreal. So we're not gonna go panel to panel with something because there's going to, uh, there would be text, you know, to kind of explain what we're seeing. So then based on that, I would just say like, I really do, I like these drawings. I like these colors. I like these spotted blacks. Uh, there's a little offness in the drawing on the face on the bottom left corner of the page. Um, not to, not to, you know, skip over the fact. And I'm, I'm just saying you're gonna have to be aware of this because they're gonna, people are gonna. Uh, um, the man hand that we have in that bottom left corner is no good. We need like. The, it's it's the rendering is is honestly like it's a large hand. Uh, you got these kind of little cross hatchy things, and so once the more texture and the more rendering you give something, it's going to make it less smooth, less pretty. And so the more rendering, especially you give to like feminine hands, is no good. Uh, and I if if I sound mean or if I sound like I'm I'm being a little brutal, it's because I'm guilty of it myself, and I'm trying to protect you guys. <laughs> I'm trying to help in that I used to, you know, I, I, I like artists like Egan Sheila and, and those guys, like you see these wonderful knobby hands and this, and I'm like, I want to do these, these things everywhere. And then when you do them on women, it's not well received. Um, and so we're just, uh, what I'm seeing in this bottom panel is just, a little offness. It wouldn't have hurt to look at a little reference to kind of fix this hairline and around the sideburn of where, you know, around the ear. Um, but these are all just little drawing. Uh, I don't wanna, yeah, these are all just little drawing flaws. They're not, 
they're not significant in this. I, I really like this page. Uh, panels one, the top left and the bottom right panel, I think, are fantastic. All of, all the circles. I think that last panel specifically, I think, is really be really beautiful. Now, like that's a really incredible image to leave people on. Um, so I would I would honestly, uh, Nicole, you're good on the page. I'm just gonna I'm just kind of playing it through. I just I would start playing with the storytelling a little more, and then you just want to. Uh, when it comes to something like such a significant face in that bottom left corner, you might just want to check reference just a little bit um, to to make sure that you you've nailed that hairline and and where things are going to go. There's a little strong on the the coloring on as far as the cheekbone and stuff like that. Um, a little more delicate in the drawing is all I'm saying, but uh, in the story time because I like the drawing. Uh, uh, I I think the colors are fantastic. Um, I think the rend I think the color rendering is really lovely. Yeah, we're just looking at some storytelling stuff and a little bit of figurative work. Pfft, keep drawing. Beautiful stuff. Thank you. All right. What what I love this that we just it's just like all over the place when it comes to styles and everything. Thank you guys again. Uh while while we're zooming through um who are who are we on? Uh, or? Your name is Or? This is fantastic. Uh, from Israel. Love it. Look what happens when you open up your, con your, uh, your convention booth to the, to the entire world. <laughs> Versus just the people that paid to be in the city on that day. Um, I say that as a digression that I'm thoroughly enjoying the idea of having a booth online. Uh, dude, I, uh, tricks and tips to create captivating panel orientations. And when you, when do you need something you need? Like a character stepping out of the panel. And when you know it's too much. Oh. <sighs> Man, you you just kind of stumble on it, you know, right there. Uh, what's too much? What's over stylized? What's 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 enough? Um, a good you know, a good friend of mine that I'm going to be talking to on Sunday, Sherard Jackson, uh, lifelong friend of mine, told me when I told him I was like, ah, I just want to do this. I want to do this, and he told me to draw to the panel, like what the panel demands, and you you know. Uh, you don't yeah uh, you you play with honestly sometimes you're going to be over stylized sometimes you're kind of going to be panel to panel to panel you know and that's fine uh look at guys that did it well if if i um i would say sir between guys like will eisner and sergio topi as far as like just seeing really wonderful choices of open panels versus breaking the panel border in that kind of a thing. I think you can't go wrong with those two guys as far as where you want to push things. Uh, you know, that said, just focus on the story because like I'm already into what I'm seeing. Um, like I, I love the color choices. I love the textures. Your, your, your focus still hits each thing and doesn't get lost in rendering and art fun stuff uh i just read the panels i follow through the panels i genuinely would like if i opened up the comic and i and saw this splash page this two-page thing happening right here i would probably just buy the comic and then see what i thought about it later like this two-page splash i'm assuming it's a two-page thing like already wins me like I'm down. I like the the rendering. Um, there there's something on a personal aesthetic thing here that I just gravitate toward. It almost feels like an etching. Um, I enjoy it. I just really like that. Uh, the next, so the, okay, so we are going through sequentials. We have two sequentials and one big image in the middle. I don't know if they all connect. Um, 
so what's that i'm talking to Snow. oh I'm, I'm just looking at the whole portfolio the three pages i don't know if they're all a part of the same story they the problem is is when you when you're definitely when you're diverse in styles and i'm just looking at a portfolio uh or if you're online right now like is this all the same story or or, or am i looking at uh different samples from different stories um and while that may possibly get a response i'll just go on with like the second page I like it, it really kind of just comes to a stylization thing. Like I like so much of what's happening here. If I was given this page and said, Hey, you can play with it a little while before it's finished. I would go back in and tweak little, little things around the figure just to kind of make them a little bit more grounded, a little bit more realistic, but I like the style. I like the color. I like the choices of the composition. Like this is, this is some comic stuff I would buy. Um, and on the third page, uh, how do you create a conversation from concept to finish work? Uh, that's a great, uh, from concept to finished work. Well, a script, uh, whether I'm working on it, whether I'm writing it or whether, uh, Rodney Barnes is writing it, like the writer on Philadelphia or whether, anything. Uh, you need a script. Uh, I hate writing scripts. Most of my scripts are actually done in thumbnail form because I can't stand the idea of writing the description of a room like because I can just draw it. So I just draw the room. Um, I like thumbnails, but in, inevitably concept, you need the script. You need to know your stories. You need to know your beats. You need to know your points. You need to, you know, beginning and ending. And it, it has to have like, if you're solid in your story, really this, the, the visuals and all of that stuff kind of, you know, flow along, then it's, yeah, it's break down into pages, break down then from panel to panel. Uh, maybe, maybe tomorrow or Saturday, one of the things we'll play around with is actual sequential stuff. Um, or, uh, if you want to, you know, if you want to hit me up, you know, I can, I can give more advice as far as like, because I can talk about sequential stuff all day. Um, oh, I just told somebody else this. Honestly, I know more writers looking for artists than artists looking for writers. And so if you hop on something like Twitter uh, and start showing your samples and say you're an artist and you're dying to draw someone's story, dude, <laughs> there's not, your, your, your DMs will be full. Um, because one, this is cool stuff. This, this definitely harkens back to a certain aesthetic that I, I enjoy and that I love. I'm looking at this third image right now with these two pages. And uh, I'm a, there's a little sequential storytelling -y stuff that I'm a, that I question, um, you know, your, your panel placement and the way that you go about it. Like sometimes panel borders don't hurt, but um Honestly, it still doesn't hurt me. <laughs> like, yeah, you, you win a lot because so much of your aesthetic fits. I just think the storytelling could, could be a little cleaner. But um, you're not going to have a hard time if you start posting that you're an artist looking for a writer. Because uh, I think your stuff is solid. You um, just post a few samples and start hitting in social media. You know, social media is all we have right now as far as like really networking and, and, and being out there. I post stuff, Twitter and all this stuff all day. Um, post your stuff, start looking around, start, you know, talking to the community, um, post your stuff and hit me up on Twitter. I'll, I'll repost and, and help that kind of a thing. Any kind, you know, um, anytime we have, you know, there's that kind of a, a need for right, like artist and writer connection. I'll repost and, and show that stuff all day in hopes that, something else you know will connect but uh but that's the kind of thing that you kind of do uh you you get on social media you talk to writers but yeah post your stuff and say hey i'm looking uh you know i would i want to draw something what do you got and uh and see and let's see what happens uh thanks for showing me the work i love your liner i love i love your aesthetic i really do 
let's jump to the next one. Uh, I'm not even going to attempt that last name, but hey, Donnie. Donnie, how are you? Whoa. No, not at all. All right, so we have two pieces from Donnie. Okay. Um, wait, I'm going to switch up something on my mic really quick because my battery might go. So if you guys just pardon me for a moment. All good. Thank you, guys. Um, oh, I don't have to hear anything. We're just going to basically be mic. So because we don't have sequentials, what, we're, what I'm looking at is, is purely based on, on thinking of uh, things on a cover level or, or an illustration level. Um, because your narrative stuff is there. You under, you absolutely understand the point. I, I really enjoy your compositions. Uh, we're just looking kind of at rendering at the moment. Like there's a certain level of, uh, of cartooning happening here um, that I think could benefit just from a little bit more, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to just drown it out with it, but reference drawing from life drawing from real figures you know i know we're drawing comic books i know we're drawing these heroes in these surreal worlds in this exaggerated form uh but it's that grounding to reality i mean i'm not this is purely on like there's some things in the muscles that seem a little off but i love like like how you're treating the wrinkles in batman's lower torso uh, I love how you treat the light when it hits the muscles on the leg. I don't necessarily agree with how the muscles on the leg look, but it's so funny. Like there's so much, your, your rendering is really lovely. I'm mean, looking at this arm on Batman and this vein and it's just, it's cool stuff. Uh, it just, it feels like it's just, it just wants the, uh, a little bit more realness. It feels like it just wants, you know, a little, a, a little grounding, but um, like your rendering is fun. It's dynamic. Like I, I can't, when I look at it, I can't not, I can't just, I don't dismiss it. Like I look at it, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to look at this for a minute. I love like your choices of backgrounds. The fact that you're knocking in these blacks and then you're knocking in these, uh, this white right behind Batman's face. So you can get that defined, silhouette that we all know of batman um it's it's really quite lovely it just needs um i would just touch a, a, a you know same thing with your with your second image um uh no you know what i, I just i lied completely uh i think your second image is pretty on point there's this left arm that seems a little longer or uh longer than it should be, or maybe a little off on the Aquaman on the second piece. Uh, you can see on the left side of the, the image, there's his left arm. And the thing is like, I uh, blame, blame the Jameson or, or just my own, whatever. Um, I, I liked it a lot more before I discovered that left arm. Um, I think the left arm throws it a little bit. The hand, it, it's less strong where if you think about it, you, you put your hand and you take that left arm out of the image. It's pretty solid. It's a pretty nice piece. You got the, the, the nice framing uh, of the water around the figure. I, I think it's fantastic. I think the, the, the depth of the rendering, I, I like the fact that you nailed Aquaman's 
forgive me, DC. Silly scales on his on his costume. Like the fact that you made that look not only solid but cool is a little irritating. Um, I think it's. I think that's lovely. Um, yeah, your rendering is is wonderful. I think there's uh, some of the some of the work needs to just come in the drawing. This is the figurative drawing, more and more and more and more and more. Um, and I say that he's like I draw more and more and more and more and more. So you know, when I say draw more figurative stuff, I draw more figurative stuff. I'm always trying to get better. I'm always trying to get more solid. You know, I love I love this this other light source hitting on the other side of Aquaman's face right there. That, that little hot white on the other side of that, that's lovely. It's just lovely. Uh, there's a certain level of printmaking that looks that looks like it's hat, that there's a certain printmaking effect that the whole water uh, around him kind of looks like a screen print in a way. Like, I think that's, that's wonderful. Uh, thank you for showing me the work. I think it's great. I think it's just more, more figurative drawing, honestly. I, I think everything else is is on point. Uh, oh wow, man, that's. Uh, uh, okay, so I'm still. I I always talk about me being a hillbilly. Arjamiro, Miss Nicole, Arjamiro. I, I give, I give the wonderful. Uh, Nicole a little bit more uh, a, a lot of credit because she's from she's originally from Canada and has a lot more experience than I I, I can butcher anyone's name and she typically corrects me um, so that's why I was double checking wow I, what I'm curious about is if this is supposed to be comic book I'm, I'm i'm just looking at the the construction of it i mean it almost looks like a one of the uh newspaper comic strips like these aren't comic book pages but they're sequential so i'm curious as to what they were i I'm, it has nothing to do with the actual just abstract idea of, of sequential art but i'm really curious as to what um where this is intended to be, where, where, where it's intended to go. Um, yeah, they're all remaining in the US. From the end of the verse, praying with me in the From the end, I never consider it be. It will never be. Uh, I'm just kind of, I apologize. Sometimes it's weird to hear your your words spoken aloud. Um, they're definitely, I'm, uh, we have the one image on here, but I'm currently just kind of going back and forth through these kind of seeing and feeling as though we're looking at an abstract emotive sequence of a character kind of transforming or going through a thing. So, on on that side, you know, I, I think there's a lot of elements that work. The problem is, is that because I don't know the overall arching story here, I'm a little lost. Um, as far as sequentials go, I'm not following the story in the least um, beyond a certain level. Like, they're there either needs to be more words here to kind of bring us along this journey or there needs to be clearer story storytelling. Uh, stylistically, I think the, the art is really, really fun. Uh, I, I think it's great. Honestly, I, I, I really, I like looking at these panels. I think this is all really, really exciting stuff. Um, I don't know if this is something that you wrote and put together or whether you were writing for us uh, or whether somebody else wrote it and you, you put the art together. Uh, horizontal and a continuous plane, the impression was made. Is the purpose of these panels the flow? Well, the purpose of every panel is to flow horizontally, sir. 
um, because we we read that way. Uh, I get it. I, I get what you're talking about. You're just because I don't know the context in which this story exists as it, as itself. I feel like you might be asking a lot from the reader. Uh, and in the overall sense of the story, this might work beautifully. But even in the abstract, crazy dream world kind of images and sequences that this kind of a thing lives in, um, a little more clarity wouldn't hurt. And honestly, it's just a little bit of storytelling that's happening because aesthetically, I, I truly like looking at everything that's happening. Whether I understood, whether I, here's my comp big compliment, like whether I understood what the fuck I'm reading or not, I would buy this because I like looking at it. Um, it feels like things start clarifying and kind of coming to a resolution at the end. So maybe you nailed it. Uh, I'm, I, you know, I have 10 minutes and I have to, you know, and I'm going through this, but aesthetically there's something there and it feels like there's, it wants, I, I, um, I don't know if this is something you put everything together on. I think, uh, this is, if it is, this is also, there's a little flaw in the lettering, like the lettering needs to be better. Um, not to just fully, you know, promote, but, uh, there's guys like the guy, Philadelphia guy, uh, Marshall Dillon, like there's a whole other level of art that these other aspects add and having a letterer letterer take over your, your, that, that aspect, uh, could be beneficial. It could help, you know, placement and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I love that this is a whole transition. It might be a little surreal in order for me to kind of critique you as far as storytelling goes. Um, but in this, in this element, I, I don't know. I like these pages. I like this art. Um, I just think the storytelling could use a little bit of a, of a breather, a little bit of a tweak. That last page, um, on page, yeah, like this sequence, like it feels like it feels like from one to three, we kind of go from kind of chaos to this really clarifying end. And uh, I think the whole this last page is is lovely. So it may be what you were going for. <laughs> Like you said, you've already got my money. I, I would have already bought the book. Um, so win-win there. But um, I'm really digging this last page. So I don't know, man. I, I dig it. I, um, I, I would like to have a little clearer storytelling. But um, I'm, a, I'm a fan of a lot of it. I'm going to go on to the next person. I got nothing else. To, oh, uh, <laughs> by the way, I'm drinking... Uh, Today we're in the in the office. We're drinking Jameson, uh, castmates. Ireland, <laughs> lovely. It's perfect time. Um, is this our last artist? Oh wow! I really do. Go, I talk fast. Oh, I'm scrolling through the images. I'm just seeing. Uh, Yay, ink washes. <laughs> I love ink washes. And frankly, let me just start off by saying all of this dog on the right side of the picture, uh, which would be the left side of the dog's face, pisses me off that that's so fun. Uh, that crisp white that you have left there to be that little light source there around the edge of that dog's nose and cuts down to the whiskers and the eye up there. Oh, that's good stuff. That's, 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 that's the work right there. That's lovely. Um, God, these eyes, you know, for a breed of dog that I can't stand, you made me really enjoy a, a, a picture of it. Um, What artist influenced my style early on? The artists that influenced my stuff early on are not the artists that influenced me today. <laughs> um, but all over, honestly, what 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 hits me? Uh, I like God. I like the two things that that sometimes fight each other. I like solidity and I like energy. Um, I like I like 
I like believability and, and knowing that something feels like it could exist, but then I like reality to be suspended on some level to take that real thing and make it do something absurd and make me believe it. And we draw comics. This isn't like film. This isn't like digital special effects and all this other stuff where you have to match this composite thing. You have to reality. You have to make sure we're, it's comics. It's budgetless. It's everything we want to draw. Um, we can go as nuts as we want to go. But for me personally, also as a reader, I want, the more I believe it, like I want to, you know, like a, like a film, like, like I, I'm how good the special effects are and stuff like that. You want to believe that you're really on Tatooine and all this other stuff. Like the, all, you know, um, so it, it is always a hard thing of, of this balance of like abstraction, exaggeration, and then still grounding in solidity and reality. Uh, and so if you can, you know, if you come up with a, you know, a, a magic, way to just make that always work and shine please let me know because honestly that's just the struggle <laughs> like always trying to make things solid dark and cool and energetic and moving and uh uh it's both exhilarating and exhausting dude i like everything about this dog <laughs> um the only thing that really kind of sets me back about the dog is that the dog is kind of sitting in a puddle of a shadow um, and I know we're not looking at a background and all this other stuff, but it's just kind of puddling. I just want some level, you know, this is what I'm talking about, about grounding with details. I was like, you could draw a straight line, like, you know, near the bottom, like near the bottom quarter of this piece. And that would add some kind of like floor and thing. And all of a sudden this piece would be like, Poom. just that little bit of like, because right now it's just milky uh not milky but like it's just this uh kind of watery dark shadowy thing um to then go over with more black ink well if you're using non-water uh if you're using waterproof ink uh uh man once you go over it with white nothing is like nothing's going to hit like it was previous so you hit it with white let's just say you're inking with uh pens or or nibs um and then you're doing washes and you hit it with white now you want to work on top of that white well now you can no longer use those same pens and nibs because on top once you're working on top of paint or once you're working on top of anything you can't really use those same tools that you were carving into the paper with so then you have you then you uh elevate i guess to you know to brush and uh and again, it, this is this gets into chemical. Uh, if you're using waterproof ink, then I can say you can use uh, either white out or white gouache to go over your flaws and then go back in with the same black ink, uh, just with a brush to fix it. If you're using things like the parallel pen and you're, you're pulling the, you know, you're using the non-waterproof aspect of it and you're pulling the ink and you're doing ink washes. Regular gouache isn't gonna work. Um, what you're going to want to either do is use whiteout uh, or some other kind of. Um... Oh, I just got the word like the, the, huh? the kind of uh, paint that like model paint, stuff like that. It's um, not oil, not necessarily oil. Huh? Enamel. Thank you. Um, Nicole. Um, enamel. Uh, you want to use like whiteout or an enamel white. Uh, or pastel. Honestly, I've had really good luck with doing these kind of oil uh, pastels over uh, some of the non-waterproof ink. Um, so, yeah, when you get into those, it really just does, depends on chemicals. Like, if you're using ink that hates this, then you have to use this. If you're using ink that loves this, you have to use that. Uh, well, thank you. This is, I, I thank you. I'm, I'm a little... It, I'm humble. This is this is in, inspired or based off a piece that I did for Spawn. Um, awesome. Like, not only not only my honor, but like really, you it didn't fall into uh, a stiff reimagining. Like this thing is emotive. This thing isn't fucking around. This thing is emotive, uh, and 
kudos. You honestly, like every, you know, any flaw in the painting, any flaw in the drawing, uh, it, it doesn't matter if the viewer walks away saying, shit, I used to call it the uh, profanity factor when I was full time, you know, painting for galleries. So like, no matter how educated you are, no matter how refined you may be, when you see a painting of mine, I need you to, I need you to curse. And I always call it the profanity factor because I've seen it. I've seen no matter who they are, when, when someone sees the right thing, it'll be like, shit or fuck that that like no matter what like that's what i want the profanity factor i want it to hit um and so even with potential even with flaws in the drawing itself of which there are a little bit this is most this is this the only thing i can come to is more figure drawing more figure drawing i love your highlights i love your composition i love the weight of the stuff and i love that you were you're still you're, you're hitting that emotional level. Don't lose that. Don't get stuck on details and, and reproducing reality and, and photos and stuff like that. Don't get stuck there. Keep the emotive stuff. It's beautiful. Uh, and then you just want to refine around it. Uh, let's go to your last one. <laughs> Dude, this, this, this is lovely. There, all right. We're going to jump in real quick with that. That hand on the right side needs to die a little bit. It makes me mad because the hand on the other side is way better. Then you get into this great face. And then between these two thumbs, looking down, you just have the most beautiful rendering of this necklace, of this coat, of these buttons, like, be, be, be thanking the, the, you know, creative gods that the bottom half of this image is just pretty. It's just, like, I'm jealous of the buttons. Uh, I'm not going to lie. If I, if I did those buttons, I, I'd be a happy camper. Uh, same thing with the side of that coat. Same, yeah, for some reason, you know, you that bottom half you nailed it actually the top half so much of this thing is on point i just want those hands to be reaching right out and grab me uh i wonder what tips could you give me to achieve more spontaneous result and be less afraid of messing it up weed <laughs> no I, um <laughs> honestly like i mean there's i don't I have no idea how old you are and what your what what the growth is in your work i've seen three images uh i'm i when you get deadlines and stuff like that like i used to i, I had to do a lot of internal stuff to try to get over it. like i want to be energetic i want to be solid um honestly i i tend to even have my babies today uh, when i'm working that i don't want to kill i was like but this looks really cool um inevitably you have a goal you want to get that page done you want that page to be effective you want it to work uh sometimes when you're scared that you might have to cut out something or or something uh might not be working i i have you know and if i can't get over it myself <laughs> that tends to be when i go and have a smoke break uh for whatever reason it for me personally it knocks down a lot of my uh, insecurities where I can leave or I can leave my office being like, I don't know. I don't know how to fix this. I don't know how to, you know, and then I can go and have a smoke and I can come back. And then it feels like, you know, the, 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 the horrible truth sets in. You look at it, you're like, Oh shit, I got it. I got to erase that face. All right. Uh, so me personally, sometimes I need a little help that, will help me see past what I, it helps you skyrocket kind of to the objectivity of does this image work? Um, as, some, as someone who's not going to just sit here and promote drug use, uh, I'll say, it's just paper, man. It's just paper. That's it. You mess it up. 
there's another piece of paper underneath it. Don't, don't, don't be precious with this stuff. Put everything you have in it, do it. Like go into it, have at it. Uh, if it doesn't work, set it aside as it doesn't work, start over. Uh, and then at some point there's going to be, whether it's a, a week, a month, a year, you're going to go back and look at that and be like, ah, oh, that's why it didn't work. I could have actually just done this, but you know what? This actually works. And I'm just going to cut this out and use this. It's, it's art. It's, it's all alive. It's all moving. Uh, you're using ink cheap. You're using paper cheap. You lose nothing by ripping the by ripping something in half and starting over <laughs> you um everything is learning uh you know just try not to hold anything precious uh and um yeah honestly man just just you know all of us we just let's just make art we don't we don't have to uh it doesn't things don't have to be perfect when you're talking about like you know not messing things up well, what's messing things up like so much of what I love, you know, my, uh, my wife and I, like she, we both love art. She knows when I'm going to go off like and love something. Cause she's like, Oh, that these squiggles and stuff like that. Jason's probably going to like that. I do, you know, one man trash, another man's treasure kind of a thing. So honestly, I just, at this point, I just say, don't hold anything precious, man. Just uh, go at it full bore. Don't be sensitive because we're all just artists trying to make things. We're trying to get better at things. We're trying to kill it. And if it doesn't work, it's not a flaw. It's a, it's, it's, it's an education. Um, what doesn't work just teaches you that it didn't work. Yay. Now, you know, it didn't work. <laughs> you know, you're, you're now more knowledgeable than you were when you started. Um, and so then hopefully the next thing you do will work and then you'll mark that that works. Um, but right now I just, I flipped through, you know, these three, one, the, the dog is solid and on point. Um, we get a, a, a little iffy around the torso on the middle fig on the second image. We get a little iffy on the, the right side of that. We just have some kind of, uh, rough feathering kind of a thing. Um, but you're your emotion is there. And on the third one, the fact that you nailed, you know, Ozzy's mouth <laughs> like that in those eyes. Yeah. Your, your touches and your small, you know, your, your, your small little, like your small details at work, those buttons, the necklace, all of it. Like there's so much good there. Just needs, just needs a little work. Just needs a little refining. There's, there's really nothing more I can tell you beyond, you know, keep, keep going, keep observing, uh, and just keep at it. At some point you, you see in your sketchbooks when you're going and going, going that like that thing you thought was shading the thing isn't actually shading the thing you wait the way you thought it was, you know, we all refine, we all adjust. We're all like, I don't, I don't think I have a thing all the, you know, up to, I have a certain level of, of stylization that I, that I tend to come back to over, you know, over and over, but inevitably I don't think I'm done. I don't think I have my thing. I don't think I have, I have a certain level of voice. Um, but I'm, I'm always waiting to see what the hell I'm going to do next. Cause you know, art is, art is living. So let's all just like, you know, relax, have fun, make some energetic, solid work and and tell some stories and uh have a good time with it this was guys this, uh, guys and girls apologies i i'm again i'm an older person so i just tend to say guys and mean everybody uh these portfolios were wonderful thank you for today yeah I, i've gotten to see so much good art <laughs> in the last couple of days um i can't wait i i'm thrilled that i have two more days of seeing other people's art um, thank you for showing me your art. I hope anybody who's watching this, that this wasn't their art, uh, enjoyed it and, and got some information from it. But, um, yeah, thank you guys again. And we're going to come back in just a couple minutes. I'm going to give you a few announcements and we're going to call it cool.
Hey guys. Hey guys. Thanks, Thanks for coming back. Um, oh, this is. One second. Pardon me. Nicole, are we good, good on, on sound? sound? Oops, sorry everybody, wiggly. So I'm working a little bit on a finishing a Billy Holiday commission uh, as we um, kind of go over some announcements. So right now, I would like to implore you guys, uh, I'm having a 25% off sale when it comes to original artwork. Uh, if you just type in the promo code Comic-Con uh, at my Big Cartel store, the link is right there, um, or the site is right there, 25% uh, off things like Spawn artwork, uh, Ape Sapien, uh, uh, Batman stuff on there, like tons of artwork for sale through the Big Cartel site, having uh, only 25% is, uh, the 25% sale is only happening through uh, Sunday. Um, speaking of Sunday, uh, we, Sunday is going to be the grand finale and we are going to have tons of exclusives and giveaways. We are going to have spawn exclusives. We're going to have art exclusives. We're going to have, uh, print exclusives, prints and giveaways and all of that jazz. Um, yes. Nicole's reminding me that I should actually show you the stuff that we should, you know. Um, so Sunday, tomorrow we still have some program, but Sunday we're going to be giving away things like Spawn limited edition numbered and signed print. Original Studio JSA prints. Hard to find first edition virgin covers of Philadelphia. And even some, some special historic spawn 300 and 301 edition. Uh, tons of cool stuff to give away. Sunday's gonna be the giveaway day. And I mean the giveaway. We're gonna come, we're, we have uh, uh, little, little competitions, little things here and there to to win these prizes but sunday sunday is going to be fun day it's going to be where you can genuinely like win some really cool uh print comics hard to find stuff and it's just going to be a blast and it's sunday so we're either going to be you know imbibing a little bit and just giving tons of stuff away why not you know you guys this is a convention on sundays even when i'm at the table sundays are, are the days that you know we just we just give some stuff away and uh i'm really excited to give some stuff away with you guys uh uh for this show uh we're you know saturday tomorrow we're still going to boom okay uh nicole she's just awesome uh <laughs> tomorrow uh at noon um we're going to start off with uh some some mimosas and some sketching with dave crosland and then we're going to do another portfolio review uh this is just this is awesome and then sunday we're just giving stuff away uh and we're gonna have sherard jackson of of darby and then we're gonna have a single malt fireside chat you know thanks guys thanks for for being here this this for this convention well yeah we'll see you guys tomorrow uh and um yeah man we'll just see you then